ready. Yes. Okay. Let's get started. Um, Patrick. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, our guest tonight <coughs> is the, the Thai Park team, and uh, they're going to be covering the uh, town center project. Uh, we have the entire hour, so uh, we usually have uh, two meetings, 30 minutes, but uh, today we only have you. So uh, if it's okay with council, we could extend over 30 minutes uh, up to an hour, correct? Yes. How about it, Mr. Marcos or Mr. Carlton? Sorry about that. Okay, I'll get, um, get us started. Uh, I was uh, thinking as I walked in, to this nice building that you folks have that is quite a, a lot of difference from the meeting that I was in in the late 1980s and early 90s when we developed uh, Industrial Ventures 1 and 2. And I have kidded with um, your town manager a little bit about which part of this building did we, we buy. Uh, we um, have created a uh, tax base at Industrial Ventures of $49 million. Uh, what we have done, and that was the beginning of our experience in working with Indian Trail. From that, we uh, developed a, a subdivision called Chrismark, 976 lots. We have um, uh, 150 apartments planned for that area. We have 24 acres of commercial. So. Uh, we then got involved in a project that you're probably familiar with called Copus One, which is on, on Monroe Road, and it's um, 204 apartments. Uh, we're in the process now of uh, breaking ground for a 9,000 square foot uh, commercial center, which uh, we have uh, totally leased, leased meaning we have letters intent for the entire building. Uh, we have had a... Um, great relationship with Indian Trail. Uh, you folks have some of the best staff that we have worked with in all the other areas that we have uh, been involved, involved with over the years. Uh, we are now involved in a project in downtown Indian Trail. Uh, it's a project that has been talked about for many years. It's a project that we believe in. Uh, we think uh, we see a lot of potential in downtown Indian Trail, and we want to be a part of that. Um, our vision is to see a, um, a blend of uh, residential with a blend of commercial, which is what we have done, as I have just covered. Uh, in all of our projects, we have created a blend of commercial, industrial, and residential. So that's what we're going to, you're going to hear about tonight. And without um, me taking any more time from the uh, subject, which is the downtown Indian Trail project. I'm going to turn it over to Marcus Arroyo, who is president of our company, to go into more details. And again, I want to thank you for your time. I think the meetings to, uh, that you have with developers is a great idea. Uh, and, and it would have been good if we'd had these many, many years ago. So thank you so much for that. How are you? I'm Marcus Arroyo. I am uh, president of Taipar, uh, part of this group that we're going to bring the, this, uh, this project in front. Mike, how do you? Okay. So the, the project that Carlton alluded to, let me give you a little history basically as far as when, when I got involved just as, as, as you guys. Have, uh, have been involved in new terms here for the most part. Um, about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, uh, we were looking at certain projects that we had in front of us. And Carlton brought this project and, and put it across my desk and basically asked me, let's assess this thing. Let's, let's bring up, a, let's get a game plan going on this or let's move on this thing. At that point in time, Carlton and I decided, let's, let's go have a, a conversation with Indian Trail. Let's see where, where the temperature's at there and see what direction uh, the town wants to, wants to go this. Oh, and the fact that we had a, a, a project that has a special use permit that was granted, um, do we dust this thing off and see where and what direction the town wanted? So we sat down with staff. 
Um, and we had some, some pretty good, interesting conversations. And working together with the public private sector this way, we decided to uh, dust her off and basically let's, let's get some other partnerships in this, in involved. That's when Ard, we brought Ardmore uh, to get involved with us. Um, we'll, we'll get into them. That's the multifamily component. We, uh, as, as far as the local developers in, in this area, we want to take on uh, the townhomes, the condos, uh, uh, office, retail. We really see a, a, a viable market for that place, especially here in Indian Trail and what's going on with the surrounding uh, corridor with all the infrastructure that's actually being put in place. We feel as the time is now. It's not, and it's 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 a good time to hit. So rather than just bringing this back up and 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 going, let's 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 do it a little different. Let's work together, and let's get in front of uh in front of the the, the staff. Let's get sit down with the town, the town manager. Patrick has been uh, has been great to deal to work with, and uh, point us basically in the right direction as far as what the the town wants to wants in this area, and so brings us to this area this point to have a, uh, a developer's meeting and be able to present something that we're excited about and we feel as though that, that this would really benefit the town as a whole. And we'd like to see, you know, get you guys basically on board to, to, to basically, basically amend this current special use permit. Um, so getting into this, uh, several um, years back, this was actually uh, the town hall. Obviously the town hall we're sitting in this. So we had to amend this permit. And the way that we went about it is what we're going to go into and start showing you and kind of go down the path on this. So this will be the uh, going down the legend on what you see. If we start from where you're looking at from left to right, that'll be from west side to the, to the east side. Um, we get into basically uh, coming right off of Indian Trail Road into commercial. Uh, we have some certain components um, that we you know, want to want to illustrate here as the bell tower. We can see that being a, a, a big monumental sign, signage type stuff, big bell tower type thing that gives kind of a, a point of reference, a, a landmark for the town of Indian Trail as you come in to the area. Something along those lines, you know, that that gives it that 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 sense of place. Um, from here, we have some commercial office. We go into just, I'm only isolating this in two parts, so let me explain what I mean by that. I'm going to go and just talk about basically the commercial district, the, the, the office, um, some condos and townhomes, and then uh, uh, Brantley White will come up and, and, and discuss the, uh, the uh, multifamily component with you all. So as we move on, you know, these, this is kind of the vision from the beginning as far as going and, and getting um, uh, some of the, the, the commercial that we think is ready to start today. So starting basically uh, on the front side there, we're ready to, to commit to putting uh, some, some, some new commercial in the downtown area and bring some new commerce and tax base basically. Um, we also want to add a couple components, and these are little, little simple components. Where you see the, the train area, uh, that's more of a buffer, but it's also utilized as a, what we look at as an incubator center, uh, somewhere where, where other businesses can actually start. And, and rather than paying, you know, uh, uh, you know crazy numbers and, and budget not being able to, to, to help people in that way, you know, maybe putting people to, 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 that have a good concept but can't find that brick and mortar that works for them, seeing if maybe a, 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 a neat destination center like that, uh, maybe putting some, something like along the lines with trains and, and uh, having more of an incubator center there, something that they can actually start the business and, and build up their clientele, build up the base, and eventually work their way into a brick and mortar spot. Uh, the little water feature that's centralized on the, on the property we feel that would be a great addition for obvious kids and, and adults for that matter. You see those as well. Um, to be able to add that feature in, 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 in there uh, just complements more of the family-oriented center that, uh, that we're going for with commercial, office, uh, and uh, live in space, uh, townhomes, and, and multifamily on the back side there. So these, these are just illustrations of some renderings uh, just to, to, to have for a point of reference for you guys to be able to share uh, with yourselves and, and see the type of product that, uh, that our party is basically committing to to bring into this, uh, into this great town. These are townhomes, basically, on the, if you guys are familiar, that's right off of Park Street. 
you know, we can see uh, we can see those having on street parking as well as some garages. Those are still in design. And you'll see where the boundary, the project boundary basically stops. And then we spill into the, the, the backside there, the multifamily component of the property. Um, but that's the master plan, the new master plan. The yellow section on the middle, that's where the, the town hall, old town hall used to be. We have that illustrated as a, an event uh, building. Um, what we, the reason why we put it up that way was that could be right now a multitude of things. Um, that L-shaped building that's adjacent to it, um, you know, there's early conversations of the potential for a boutique style hotel. Uh, to be able to bring that in across the street, have a, uh, an event center that can actually house the, uh, the Union County Commerce, it can, it can house anybody, but have something like that. The arrow that points right behind that is to have basically uh, Indian Trails, one of Indian Trails' first uh, beer gardens, um, and, and that, that, has, that offers all sorts of commerce for, for um, you know, 20, 20 somethings all the way up to the, 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 the elderly as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a great sense of place as well, and it complements some of the other components. You see the educational building. Um, we that's the daycare. We've maximized that square footprint from the original shape, uh, I believe from 4,000 to right around 10,000. That's kind of the, uh, we wanted to bring more of the, the current market conditions to today's way of, uh, of the way things are done. That basically houses anywhere from infants all the way up to the 12. Uh, as, as, in, in, as right now, currently, there's about three uh, daycares that want to be in, in, in the Indian Trail in the center. So we see restaurants, we see the potential for hotels, we see the incubator center to be able to put pe uh, 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 good concepts of businesses in play and, uh, and give them a, a place that they can actually kickstart their businesses. Uh, mom and, and mothers and daughters basically working with, uh, whether it's a bead shop and they can go in there and open up their first business. They're not, you know, the rents and all that stuff aren't, aren't crushing them. Um, the beer garden, I think, is a great addition, a great complement to, uh, to the overall project, as well as some of the other uh, components with the, uh, the garden, the uh, uh, sprinkler or the, uh, the waterfall area for the kids. The, now, I guess we can go move right along into, into the, uh, I'll bring Brantley up here so he can uh, talk a little bit more about the multifamily and then uh, once he completes any questions that, that you guys will have, we'd be uh, happy to answer those, and, and any comments, basically, we'd be happy to hear those, okay? Uh, right there. All right, thank you all for um, having us tonight. Uh, this really is a, a great uh, way to introduce a proje project and, and go over it to iron out any questions. Um, I'm Brantley White. I'm with Armore Residential. We're an apartment uh, developer out of Greensboro. Um, just a little bit about us, our, uh, our principals, we've, our group's been in business for over 40 years. Uh, we're typically long-term holders of, of the projects that we develop. Uh, that is our strategy, so we're um, not the kind of group that comes in and builds it and flips it. Um, We've basically have either completed or have under construction uh, 11 communities since 2012. So we've been very active in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Uh, to speak to the specifics of, of this project, um, this is basically, this is an elevation of the building that we are proposing. Um, there will be 252 units, uh, 105 one bedrooms, 105 two bedrooms, and 42 three bedrooms. Um, this is the site plan that's uh, part of the master plan, but uh, our 18 uh, acre piece of, of the master plan. We've intentionally um, pushed the buildings uh, off the, away from the railroad track as, as much as possible. Um, you can see kind of a list of our, our amenities that we offer. Uh, you know, a, a fitness center, saltwater pool, uh, grilling pavilion, playground, Starbucks coffee bar, business center. We offer complimentary Wi-Fi to all of our residents, dog park. Uh, we have a, a clubhouse that has a, uh, a rooftop area, which people um, really seem to gravitate towards. Um, also have a, a yoga area that's part of the uh, rooftop area. 
our units. We build a you know quality high-end product with, with granite countertops, stainless appliances, nine-foot ceilings, crown molding, walk-in closets, um, basically any of the appointments that you would expect for a, for a high-quality Class A uh, apartment. Here are some uh, photos of some of our existing communities. So hopefully you can see that we do put a, a high emphasis on, on quality. Um, that's essentially the, the summary of, of the multifamily piece of, of the project. So as Marcus said, we're happy to answer any specific questions. How much are, are the um, apartments? I'm sorry, can you repeat how that? Much, how much you, are the, the, the rents? Rental, yeah, the rental, uh, well, the projected rents are around uh, 1050 for a one-bedroom up to around $1,500 for a three-bedroom. That's, you know, subject to market conditions, but that's a general range. How many townhomes are you guys thinking about putting in there? Is that, is that, um, is that a... Or do you know? Uh, right now, basically, the, the way the, the current entitlements that we have are between 300 townhomes and condos together combined. Um, the master plan right now, the way it sits, uh, probably doesn't lend itself to that, so it will be a, a little less than that. But, but we have the rights, basically, based off of our previous one to, to, three to 300 to, to, to uh, condominiums, condos, and townhomes combined. So about 300. Yeah. Now, now, just for the, uh, I, get, I keep forgetting. Um, both are townhomes and condos are, are both. Um, just explain the difference between a, a townhome and a condo. I, I know that they're both owned by the people that, that live there. Correct. But the definition. What's the definition of the the two that that makes them different? The uh, uh, townhomes, the townhome uh, definition for, for, for me is basically a, a, a set alone uh, 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 regime, basically. It's a, just a, 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 where a condo can be mixed within different aspects, meaning uh, whether it's on a, um, let's just give you on this particular example, it could be mixed with retail, could be mixed with office, and then a condo, and then so you have a condo. Something like a, like a downstairs could be the... Uh, yeah. um, um, a business and upstairs, and you'd call that a condo and not a townhome. That's correct. Right? And you'd call a townhome uh, one that's not mixed with business. That's correct. Is that so? That would be basically the difference. Yeah, that would be its own entity, and then you have you have some, somewhat of a, a, a different type of setup association, basically that's affiliated with that, the, 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 with the townhomes. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's a good question, though. That's that's uh. There's there's, there's kind of a fine line. There's there's a kind of there's a fine line on some of those on there, and they could be used in different ways. Townhomes have a little bit more <coughs> definitive uh, response to them. That's why you'll see them kind of isolated, off of uh, off the beaten path where the uh, condo you mix in. Mm. The property has changed hands several times. I believe I'm not sure. Uh, I know. Somebody passed away, Mr. Carroll. I believe that was his name. Can you tell me who the who is, who what? Yeah. who's in the LLC? I, I think uh, Carlton would probably be best suited to answer answer that question. We uh, formed a uh, LLC, uh, Ms. Howe, and uh, our company uh, owns fifty percent of a LLC called Bowtie. Uh, we're also have the same structure for the Copus apartments. Um, we got involved uh, because of our belief in what we see happening in downtown Indian Trail. So to answer your question, we own half of it and uh, Dean Harrell and uh, Darren Sutton on the other half. Okay. Thank you. There's a, a chunk right here that's um, that's missing. Is that the cemetery that I'm looking at? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, it kind of puts you in, in mm. perspective. And then you have where the legend legend sits, that would be the, uh, the Methodist church on the front side. So that is Park Road right there where you have two entrances coming off of? Yes, sir. It'll be three, if, uh, it'll be three of them going off of the project boundary. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, just give you several entry points there. Yeah, mm. you're, you, yeah I put you, you're, you're absolutely right on that location. What's your plans on, on phasing this in? Yeah, this this project here, the, the, it, we could see the basically a, about three to four phase uh, aspect of it. Uh, gives about three three to five years uh, worth of phasing. Uh, what we like to commit to on this is the, the multifamily, uh, and then phase that complement that with some uh, entry buildings on the commercial side coming off of Indian Trail. Uh, as well as uh, maybe focus on a couple of um, townhome uh, buildings as well. Uh, so I could see about a phasing of about three to four phases throughout this. Uh, we would put the infrastructure this, on phase one, put the infrastructure from the, the entry at the West Point there and follow that all the way through uh, on the, clo the side closest to the uh, railroad track and um, and go ahead and put that infrastructure in as well as the pond on both sides so mm -hmm. um on the um the building that you were talking about uh, and mr tyson i'm trying to think what you called it uh, um where I, I think i think i was thought of a wedding type building where you event. have a wedding what do you what, what do you call e it it's we illustrate it as a, as an event an event building event building yeah yeah okay yeah and i was just curious on on the event building um would that kind of could all, could it also be more or less a union county convention absolutely uh building <clears throat> and not just like a like uh, or is that your plan for it? Uh, a convention built convention and um a wedding yeah. facility and that type thing would it be would it would it be that way or would it be more of just a wedding facility no we the, the conversations and the needs basically for the area uh, as, as a whole uh, would lend itself basically to a, um, a an event center that would be able to house both options um, but it would be a great addition to have a centralized location like Indian Trail uh, especially with the infrastructure that's being placed in the surrounding roads from 74, the parkway, as well as um, uh, Old Monroe Road here within the next several years uh, to be a centralized location for uh, maybe a place of, uh, of um, Union County to be able to house their events there as well. Well, so. you know, that, that'd be nice. I just, I just came from a, and I don't know if the building, I don't know how big the building you're planning on building there could be, but I just attended a graduation yesterday in, in the Cabarrus County Arena and I don't expect it to be as big as the, the Cabarrus <laughs> yeah. County Arena yeah but um how big how big would you would you consider building that and well I can't and, tell and, you or, or 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 would you you know and I have no idea what the Cabarrus that's the first time i would ever been in it yeah and and I, I don't know what a building like that even costs yeah it, I'm it, I'm not really familiar with that building. I, I'll look into that. And but it held what, about. I, I'm I'm guessing it held four thousand people. Is that is that has anybody ever been there before? Um, that that was my guess. Yeah. 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 It's pretty big. Uh, four four thousand people to house four thousand people. I don't think that that building would uh, would actually be able to reach that capacity. Um, but those little kids that'll graduate from uh, that daycare, we could probably house that. <laughs> well, that well, that's kind of wonder I was where I was getting at because you know I, I wouldn't. Of course, I, it's not my money, so yeah. it's your it's you guys' yeah. money. But I'd like I'd like to see it, it be a, a a convention type center, which I know is is probably not what you have planned, but convention event um, and something that possibly could give um, uh, you know the. the the kids a place yeah. to instead of go all the way to you know that all of Union County could have and of course we're only talking about a couple of days a year for that yeah. but <clears throat> it's yeah. just an, just ideas yeah 
No, the reality of, of the, the true conversation that we could have and, and will continue to have with our team is, uh, a, a, like I said, a boutique style and, and, and bookend this basically in the center. It, it kickstarts the, the, the center hub of this the, the Indian Trail downtown, and especially with what you guys have already started, uh, you guys as the town started up in this general area. And so, um, uh, to, so to have a, the potential for a boutique style hotel and an event center to be able to house some sort of functions that way, um, that's that's basically what 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 we're looking to do. Right, and I was looking at a brochure too yesterday when I was in the building, or maybe I looked on my phone to find my way there, <clears throat> and I I noticed that that even even in a smaller facility you could do it, but I saw like a high school wrestling state championship tournament mm -hmm. there, uh, those type things. You know, all those things. If if you have a hotel there, I, I'm you know I just try to think big think. And and that's that's what I would like to see come to Indian Trail. I, I I'm I'm I like to see uh, uh, you know young people coming and and uh, you know a wrestling tournament. Whether I don't know that it would be a basket be big enough for a basketball, but but type thing those type things that I think could be used more than just a wedding facility, but maybe a facility that you have you do have. I go to convention. I'm in the food business. Do convent uh, food shows and you do food shows. You could do you know. Lots of different things there, and uh, and kind of make Indian Trail the hub of Union County right. to to bring that in. But right. I'll, I'll be I'm, I said enough. So. No, you can keep talking. I like your ideas <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Last night I was reading this magazine, and um, the title of it is "Retail Follows Rooftops." So with this apartment developer who we picked is one of the best. We didn't want our name on it unless we had the best. That's going to jumpstart this whole area. So we kind of kind of got to play it a little bit by ear to see what happens, get our restaurants in, and then all this will, all these pieces will start coming together. I see the same thing you do. You know, I'd love to see all that activity, people walking, uh, not driving. So that's that's our vision and um, this fellow right here is going to see we get it started. So, um, pardon me, um, Marcus, it is. Yes. Uh, you have a really good name, so that <laughs> I was going mean, to compliment you. Listen, too. <laughs> when I heard that, I felt okay. This is a good guy right here. Um, having said that, um, two questions. Yep. Uh, first one is, are you if this is approved, are you going to be doing it in phases? That's question one. Mm -hmm. And the second question is. Um, what what do should it be approved? What do you think the construction or the completion time would be? That's that's a key question. Mm -hmm. So I, I I asked the phase in in the event that if you're going to phase in, then it probably would alter your timeline. But if you can, yeah, yeah, and and we have our engineers basically for here that we'll, so I'll start that conversation. We can go into a little bit deeper uh, on that. So. Um, um, we do see this being phased. It, 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 is, it has that magnitude to be able to be phased uh, on that. Um, in, in, in the first phase, we see the, the multifamily component uh, as well as certain buildings on the front side, some infrastructure being placed in there. Um, as far as basically start, if we were to start this year, and this, this project that's shovel ready, basically, uh, we want everyone on board, but we're ready to start this year. Uh, financing's in place and we're ready to kick this thing off. And so the seeing if we were to break ground on this this year, uh, th third or fourth quarter, let's just say, of this year, we're looking at, is that fair to say, about 24 months before, um, uh, about 18 to 24 months before That's products on, 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 online. So that puts us basically two years at, what, with, uh, with our first phase. Meanwhile, going ahead and starting basically second phase sometime in that timeline. Uh, third and fourth phase, if there is a fourth phase, um, uh, looking at f four to five years, basically, up before completion. Marcus, is that, does that answer basically? Yeah, you, yeah it does. Do you, do you want to, you guys want to add anything to that? Or? I think that's a very fair response. Yep. Yep. What's the plan for the construction traffic? 
Yeah, well, that's one. Uh, I think I, I would uh, want John to take that one on for me, on since he's so familiar with that. So, construction traffic. Uh, construction traffic would enter through what is the, the main entry point right there. I think we would try to divert all construction traffic off of Park Road uh, and keep it right now where there is an at-grade access point. If you leave here, cross the tracks and look on your left, you'll see there is an at-grade. I think the town actually has used it for parking in the past. Uh, but that would be where our construction entrance would be. How do you think that's going to impact the daily traffic out there as it is? Um, there will be an impact on the traffic, yes. Positive or negative? Uh, it will increase the amount of traffic on a daily basis. Um, back to Mr. McIntyre's, oh, I'm sorry. Um, do you have any suggestions how to mitigate that? Um, the good things that are currently happening are roadway improvements that are currently under construction. The improvement, the completion of independence, the completion of the bypass will help the current traffic condition in downtown Indian Trail. Uh, the planned chestnut connector, I know there's time involved with that, the planned improvements to Old Charlotte Highway, all of these under construction, under, you know, projects that are active projects by the DOT uh, will serve to help the traffic condition that we currently all deal with in downtown Indian Trail. Got a, a couple more questions I thought of. Um, uh, one of the questions is, is, it, is this is going to be a really vibrant um, new area very new area and you're going to drop it into an area that that's got some older buildings around it and that type thing have you guys ever uh, approached or, or talked with the the owners of the land that, that, that may uh that, that own any of the land that that may be the older some smaller buildings that they maybe the buildings that even sit on the road out there that almost sit on the on the on the road uh have you have you ever had any kind of talks with them whatsoever about acquiring that or or doing any sort does that make any sense to you and, and i'm thinking on on your terms too or what you're thinking of is is you know if i'm if i'm building a a brand new beautiful area i kind of want it to i want the surrounding areas yeah. to be uh to be you know alike yeah. uh, in a lot we, of ways we, our approach, uh, our approach is, um, and that's a fair question on that. that our approach is, is, our focus is on this property as we have acquired that, and we want to do something uh, fantastic on it. Things like this, basically, what we would consider is to work with those, those the, the the adjacent property owners, uh, whether it's it's to sell, whether it's to work together. Um, to have a, a full vision, which the town has already provided and, and is in front of us. Activity like this will probably, more likely as we've seen, will breed activity in, in, along those lines. So there's certain opportunities that will open the door for those landowners as well, uh, whether they decide to develop that uh, and, and or update their buildings. Um, I can see that happening here in the near future as, as our phasing goes out and, and they see what we're able to do on this property. So it, it would be a, uh, I'd like to turn it to be more positive for all, but yeah, we, we, we would be willing to have conversations with them and or work with them. And, and the last question, I think maybe be the million dollar question here is, um, you know, I, I think this property was approved many years ago. Am, am I not? Correct. Long before I became on the council, yep. and and so and this may be a a, a question for plan, our planning department too. Rocks, I see you trying to <laughs> not look. <laughs> but <laughs> what are we? And and this may be a question, an internal question too. What do we do or have the power? Or obviously they they have permission to build. On the property, correct? Am I not, am, am I correct to say that? What I think would be correct to say is where you, you kind of kicked off is that you know this project I think originated back in around 2004. So you know, you've got roughly a, you know depending on when you want to measure the date, you've got around a four, you know 14 year old project plus or minus. Um, you know some activity has occurred on the site. You know we all know the site's been clear. There's some temporary erosion control that's been done some resources invested in early design plans and even refreshed a little bit to, as you've seen on the screen here. There is sort of, and I'll ask Karen just to jump in if, if uh, I get off track, but I think there's an open question in terms of when you have a 14-year-old project, 
you know, what is the developability of uh, w whatever that previous permit entitled? And that's a question that we are still managing internally. Um, let me fix that real quick. It's uh, 11, uh, 2007. Uh, so 11 year old, right? Uh, the permit, the number says. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a difference on, on 14. I don't want to cross that threshold where we miss the opportunity. No, we, yeah, we feel as though we have vested rights on this that, that, as what we've done, the amount of money basically that's been spent on there. So uh, rather than uh, that is a conversation that we've had internally as well, and I think it should be one that uh, should be had as well by, by the town. But where we're at today is we're ready to invest a significant amount of money and kick this thing off. And, uh, and, and, and basically and, and, and spark up basically the economy and down here that's I don't want to say it's much needed but uh, some commerce like Carlton alluded to uh, we're, we just broke ground on a 9,000 square foot building and uh, and we're, we're basically we have LOIs on on that that's spoken for on hundred percent of it um, people are looking to want to do business here in Indian Trail and um, there's not that many options for them and down here in this area, we can kickstart that. So Marcus, uh, sorry to interrupt, but quick question. Based on what you just said, would you consider in terms of the phasing, putting the commercial first? Because I think you mentioned yeah. the residential would be sort of the phase one. For, uh, based uh, combine, on combine, demand? yeah. Marcus, combine, when it, but let me be clear. We would commit, we're prepared to commit with the multifamily, because we need that component, in order to basically not lure, but be able to bring commerce in for the commercial simultaneously. So as that's being phased in on phase one, we would also commit to building uh, uh, individual buildings on the front side there and then fa start phasing them out. So we would in, uh, commit to, to commercial with on phase one. With all the infrastructure. Yeah, with a lot of the infrastructure in there on, on phase one. All right. Yeah. Is this the only, as it stands right now, what you're showing me, there, there's one way in and one way out. Uh, t there's in the in the building there's four in, in the property is four ways in, in in and out. So you have the the one on 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 um, Indian Trail Road, and then you have three on off a of park. Is that going to interfere with the homes that are back there? Um, as far as oh, as, as far as the traffic and and yeah, I mean it, it's it's going to interfere on on uh, on some points in the morning, same as as the you know the, the the park does basically when there's baseball games and anything that happen on there. Certain trap traffic patterns are uh, are, are going to gear be geared towards that. So, uh, that's one of the great things about property like this and the, and, and the components that you're able to put together is you're, you're, you're really hoping that somebody can, can, can live, recreate, and, and, and work on, on, on the property itself. The other question I had was uh, stormwater. Uh, I was around in 2005, and I understand um, they were try the, the staff was trying to get the owners to have uh, uh, underground storage and let it s run off slowly so it wouldn't f uh, uh, flood the areas in town here. Mm -hmm. uh, have you looked into that or heard about that? Uh, I think I think uh, we did, and uh, John I th would probably be the best person to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was also here in 2006. Um, so our preliminary design is based on a 100-year storm event, which was the requirement at that point in time. So what has changed since then, though, is water quality standards have changed. So we will actually have a more intense, a greater uh, detainment and water quality feature than would have been required in 2006 to permit the drawings, obviously, and move forward. We'll have to meet current stormwater design standards. So that guarantees no flooding down further in Indian Trail then? Um, what that says is we will reduce the amount of water, the quality, or will increase the quality and reduce the quantity of water that leaves the peak water that leaves the site right now during the storm events, two, five, two, 10, 25, 50, 100 year storm events. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. What kind of building materials are you going to be using for the exterior on the uh, multifamily? <coughs> Um, there'll be brick and fiber cement siding. Stone. There might be some stone that's uh, inter interspersed with it. If I can, did I go the wrong way? No. Keep 
So what you're seeing is brick on two stories and fiber cement on the, the top. Okay. And again, there'll probably be some stone accents. And we were just talking about the infrastructure, um, you know, the water, sewer, storm drainage, et cetera. Is all, all that gonna be done at once or is that? Okay. These units, are they gonna be rent, rented or are they for sale or both? These will be rented on the back portion of the property. Okay. The condos, the condos and townhomes will be for, for sale. sale. For sale. Mm -hmm. Did you come up with a price on that? Yeah, they got it. They got it. Oh, not on the condos and the and the uh, townhomes. You didn't have what I gave was the rental rates rental that we're rates. projecting. Yes, ma'am. So what's the ballpark on on the one bedroom or two bedroom? One bedroom about a thousand fifty. Uh, two bedroom around thirteen hundred and three bedroom around fifteen hundred. No, I'm talking the ones that are for that people the for sale. Yeah, that's so how I haven't I, we haven't come up the, on, on that. We're still doing a market study on the the townhomes okay. for that area. Um, you know, we're, we're working on some now currently in, in, in downtown in, uh, Waxhaw, and, um, and that study basically has come back to, to do something between the 325 to, to 375 on the townhomes. Uh, these will be a little bit different uh, than that as those are three-story basement. Um, drive-in option, this, these won't have that option, so it'll be, uh, it'll be less than, than that from what the preliminary numbers that we're seeing on there. I remember back several years ago, there was a problem with parking. There just didn't seem to be enough space here. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you tried to get along the railroad uh, parking in the back right before you get to the tracks there. But across the street where the town hall was, um, that was, I believe, donated to, or, or we purchased it. Somehow the town got that property because you have our, our, our sheriff's cars parked there and so forth. But, um, it, one thing that concerns me, and I'll be very honest with you, is the train derailments here. It's, um, it can be a problem, it's so close. And I believe, uh, I don't know if I saw that on the other one, but there was a gas station, someone, I think. Yeah, that's, that, that, <laughs> that was just yeah, asking yeah. for a double that's whammy been, there. That's been uh, removed, that's why we kind of put a buffer um, in that area, not for derailment, uh, forbid that ever happens in the, in the area. That's not the reason, but we put a buffer there in lieu of a gas station that, uh, that will house basically more of retired potential cabooses that'll be, uh, in, in footings and welded, uh, as a good buffer basically off of that. But, um, you know, we're from center line to our proper to the properties, uh, roughly at about 120 feet. 100, 100 feet, 200 feet. Wide. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got a 200 foot wide right away. So center line over that is roughly about 100 feet that, that the, the CSX basically has that we can't put any structure or anything like that in there. Okay. And that should, that should basically be able to appease, again, God forbid anything like that ever happening. I know, but it yeah. happens all over. <laughs> Just one other question um, for me. The, um, the million dollar question I was speaking about a minute ago, <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think, I think this is, you know, it looks great, but I think that question has to be, I guess, talked about with the town and, and then the, the council just, you know, because I, I'm, I'm a little unsure to be honest with you. I'm unsure what, you know, what, where, you know, exactly what that answer was and what it meant and mm -hmm. to, to get a better answer. And, uh, if the answer is that, that, that this is a property that, um, uh, whether it was 11 years ago or 14 years ago or how many years ago it was approved and it and it stands to be approved then I think the council has uh, I don't want to use the word no choice but a good choice to work with you to make it the best we can make it mm -hmm. and uh, and I would hope that you guys would work with the council uh, whoever the council is because I know it is gonna you know be in years in the prog in progress uh, to work with them and, and, and maybe share ideas and mainly work with the uh, work with the public. Hmm. You know, I, the councils always like to work with with the the public and what they want, and if, just listen. You know, mm -hmm. listen to what they want and 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 try to you know if if the homes back there need some buffering, you know, buffer for the homes, buffer for this. Work with the residents and. Uh, 
you know, I, 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 I mean, a lot of the ideas are, are really, they really look good. They really look good ideas, but we first, I would think, would have to take step one. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. Yeah, we're that's what we're basically looking to do is just amend what's what's been approved. Um, to to like I said, uh, uh, the current market conditions. I think that's a great approach, basically, on the way that we're we're viewing things. And um, and like I said, we're we're uh, we're finance ready and we're ready to basically kick this thing off. And so uh, that being said, um, we will we'll look forward. I guess uh, I, I've never done one of these like this. So from from uh, from this, do we uh, do we work on comments basically that we'll be able to get from from the board? Yeah. Uh, the next step, Marcus. Any additional comments that weren't shared here yeah. today? We want to give council a chance to come up with some more. What we'll do within the next couple of days, mm -hmm. we'll provide you with a copy of the meeting minutes. Everything was discussed here tonight. Mm -hmm. And the additional comments for you guys to respond back. And, uh, and uh, uh, what we'll do is we'll have another session uh, that you could come back and those comments will be further discussed and, and, and maybe elevated to the second level of the, the communication. So Good. I have a question. Um, David, you asked a good question earlier about had we talked with uh, some of the surrounding property owners, uh, and we, we talked to uh, the town manager about possibly doing a buying the property across the street from us, and he was asking way too much for it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could work with him a little bit <laughs> and get him more reasonable because uh, we do have an interest in it. If not buying it, doing a public-private partnership. Could I get a clarification on that special use permit and what the the amendment is to it? On my my justification on on it, as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Um, considering the basically on on the master plan, some of the changes that were uh, that were basically illustrated on there, uh, moving. The, the multifamily components further away from the rail, so it, it changed that from the original site plan, uh, removing the the town hall off there and, and adding more of a of a uh, event center. Um, we we made the uh, the daycare bigger and larger in spec, um, and then adding some of these other components basically as far as smaller amenities, the fountain area, and uh, the the beer garden. Um, and then the little caboose center, the incubator center, if you will. Um, you know, just the fact that we're amending that. If you look at, compare the, 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 the original to the one that we're, we, we present here today, uh, those would be the, the components that would, uh, that would have shifted that. How much green space is this property? And is it a 49 acre parcel? It, it's 47. Ish. It's under okay. 47, yeah. And and the green space percentage? I want to say it's about 20. What's it about 20? Yeah, yeah. I can get that. I can get that that information to you. Okay. The, the multifamily piece, we have roughly six acres of green space. Okay. Six acres. Just on the back. That's that's a third. That's about thirty. Six point about thirty acres. on the back side there. About thirty some percent. And that one retention pond will you feel that'll suffice well, for, for for the multifamily. We have our own pond in the back. Corner. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see that and that the commercial be serviced by the one in the middle. The property, uh, the property uh, project boundary there that'll house basically that multifamily component will house that pond, all the water from there, and then the the, the front side will be able to house on the uh, on that centerpiece. I like the project, but the problem that I have with it is is the traffic concerns. Um, like whenever you go to Indian Trail Pharmacy or any of those shops there on on the boulevard it's it's almost impossible to to make a left turn or or depend you know to um to cross the traffic and and I see with during that construction phase you know you already have the one light then you've got a train consideration that road generally speaking is backed up from Indian from Independence all the way past Gribble going towards the school where South Fork ties in. Have you thought about possibly trying to tie into South Fork? 
Um, no, but that would be a um, that'd be a conversation that we would be definitely willing to have with uh, with the town as far as to alleviate any pressure that way. Absolutely. And has a TIA been conducted? A TIA was conducted in um, in 2008, uh, all the way to the nine. So it hasn't been updated as of uh, today. But a TIA was provided on um, in 2008. Okay, well, I would think that this, the, the traffic has changed dramatically yeah. since we've, we've had some um, success in getting some road improvements right. you know, right. made around here, and that just changed in a matter of two or three years. Yeah, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change significantly here within the, yeah, you're right, with, with the changes that we're seeing with our very own eyes, correct? Do you have a potential list of uh, clients that would be interested in coming here? We do. We do have some uh, some individuals that we are talking with early stages of conversations that would like to put themselves here, um, uh, just to give you a, 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 a kind of a brush uh, as far as not making that public right now. Um, but there's an a, attorney group that wants to basically put a, a, you know one of their headquarters or a headquarters basically just a central office mm -hmm. in the area. Uh, there's good name restaurants that want to go ahead and 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 and. Uh, put uh, I think their second or third location and make this uh, identify this as their location so um, we are getting that type of feedback basically um, um, currently and that'll continue as this comes to fruition well for years everyone wants a really nice restaurant around here and we can't seem to get one yeah so. yeah I think this one would land a pretty good one that you uh, several of them that you'd be impressed with good. yeah thank you council we're at 625 yeah if we can yeah. Patrick, did you have any final words? Oh, I just like uh, to say thank you for sharing the, the plan with us and the changes. And like I said, uh, Marcus Carlton and everybody, I'll go ahead and send you something within the next couple of days. Yeah. Any questions, please, we're available. And then what we'll do is we'll reserve for another session so we could go ahead and, and kind of elevate the conversation and allow council to, if they have any more comments. So I think. Sounds good. I want to thank every one of you guys for allowing us the time, to, especially an hour here to spend with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a booklet or something that you are giving out to show what you have going on there? I can. I didn't bring one with me, but I will definitely uh, drop one off by tomorrow. All right. Thank to you. you. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. At this time, we'd like to call the Union Trail Town Council meeting for Tuesday, June 12th, 2018, to order. If you please, just silence your cell phones. And if you need to take a call, please step outside. Um, if everyone, please rise for a Pledge of Allegiance. standing for our moment of silence. <clears throat> Are there any additions or deletions? Mr. Head? Yeah. Um, I'd like to add something to um, new business. Yeah. I, I guess. Yes, sir. That would be 11G resolution authorizing sale of certain real property. Okay, Council, have any objection? <coughs> Not at all. No? Okay. Mr. Cohn? Yes, and I would like to take off the um, 12A board and committee appointments, vacant and expiring positions, Council. Uh, reason being that we were going over that, looking at different um, scenarios of the um, on here and on the expiration of some of these, some of the people that were uh, that had expiring uh, their 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 tenure was expiring. Do not know it. And the thing that I, we don't want to do is put people on the. Uh, same committee and then 
two people show up because someone didn't know that their that their uh, that their tenure had expired. So we're going to make sure that everybody is contacted, um, and hopefully by the by next Friday, if we can, uh, Patrick, yeah. and get back to the council and let know that everybody's been notified. And therefore, if there's anybody that's a present member that's getting ready to lose their tenure, then uh, let uh, let them know so they can fill out an application so we won't have that problem. So we'll I apologize if you're here for that, but that uh, that just kind of eliminates a, a problem that could pop up. So That includes anyone here that was with the application in regards to Mr. Sandy? I, I see Sidney Sandy there tonight, so... And, uh, and uh, any, anybody else here for a board uh, tonight? Dennis? Dennis? Okay, I apologize to both of you. Okay, so that's being tabled. Yeah. Mr. Gay, Mr. Sandy, they're tabling that item for tonight. One addition. Uh, Mr. Uh, deletion, please. One more deletion. It'll be 11E, Town Council meeting live streaming. We're going to postpone that for a bit. Okay. All right, and um, Marcus, would you kindly, um, I, I request the count, someone in the council to remove item 11C, uh, pending more information. Um, someone so would we're make, getting rid of it? Yeah, if we can remove that, if one of you would remove it for me. Make, the, make a motion to delete item 11C on behalf of the mayor. Pending more info. Pending more info. Thank you. Any other additions or deletions? Sorry, Jerry, what did you, what did you take on? 11E. Uh, 11E. Okay. Yes, council meeting live streaming. If there be no other additions or deletions, I'll need a motion to approve the amended agenda, please. So moved. Ms. House made the motion to approve. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Brings us to presentations for new business recognition. First on the list is uh, Publix. Bradley, are you here? Did he make it? We'll postpone that one. And um, Amanda, if you'd step up. You have, uh, from this is new business, uh, craft it. Mm -hmm. um, you have a minute to tell us about your business. Hello, so um, I'm Dr. Amanda Stanford. I teach at Wingate University, and I opened a small craft store um, at the corner of um, Indian Trail Road South and um, Old Monroe Highway. And we are focused on teaching um, art. We're focused on making quality handmade goods for gifts. And we're an event space, so we do parties, we do um, graduations, birthdays, that sort of thing. And um, so we're open from uh, six, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night or seven. Um, and so really what we're, we're primarily there to um, um, provide a space for artists to come and gather. And we're seeing quite a bit of success. We've only been open for four weeks and we've, also, we've already had um, a lot of people come in and that's been very encouraging. Um, and uh, so the other business owners in our strip mall have said to me that um, it's really, in the past couple years, um, improved quite a bit. When, um, when we first moved here four years ago, um, it was not nearly what it is now. And so they have expressed to me how pleased they are that things are improving. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the town of Indian Trail, oh, go ahead, everybody. <laughs> Welcome you, Thank you to Indian Trail and wish Thank you many years of success. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to item B, proposed recreation, recreational commercial site. Mr. Sadek, I yield the floor to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to report to council and the, uh, the audience a uh, uh, couple businesses that they approached the town, uh, both of them uh, sport-related, so uh, in addition to many sport uh, uh, establishment here in town uh, hopefully one day will be sort of like a Munich Germany uh, for, for sport events uh, but the first one is uh, it's a business that uh, uh, they uh, 
uh, simply is uh, the sport is uh, pickleball. Uh, Jason and the rest of the recre recre recreational uh, staff, they're very familiar with it. But they're not only coming in uh, with the fields and the sport, uh, they're willing also to bring uh, a, a restaurant, boutique shop, and uh, uh, two bars, if you could. So we're looking at facilities like this, uh, uh, and they are interested in a parcel around Chestnut Parkway uh, uh, complex. Uh, so we've met with them twice so far, and uh, Gary Evans, our economic development coordinator, is, is the lead on this one. So hopefully this one will strike. Uh, in addition to this one, we do also have a client that uh, Rox, our director of planning, is, is working with right now and they would like to build an Olympic swimming pool. Uh, also, this is at the intersection of Chestnut Parkway and Lemon Drive. So we're looking at uh, uh, two sport-related uh, uh, establishment that is gonna complement Carolina Courts at our park. Uh, we just wanted to share that with you, and uh, as soon as uh, Rox and, and Jason and uh, uh, Mr. Evans uh, get more into this, uh, and working with these two companies, we, we will keep council updated. It's very exciting. We're looking forward to it. So uh, we just wanted to share the news with you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Very Any good. Council comments on? Private business, eh? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Private business. Private yeah. business, that's right. Okay. That brings us to public comments. I'll open the comment, public comment period. As a reminder, these Proceedings are live and recorded. Please keep your comments civil and approach the council as a whole. Council as well as audience, please be respectful and you're limited to three minutes. And you cannot give your allotted time to another speaker. Our first speaker is Gordon Daniels. Your time will begin after you state your name. Yes, my name is Gordon B. Daniels. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, the purpose of my coming up here tonight uh, has been initiated by two events. One was a couple of weeks ago um, dealing with uh, ethics, and the other was a, uh, on social media. It was a comment uh, attributed to a uh, council member and the uh, state statutes. Um, uh, on, a, on a more of a lighter side, I think about six, seven months ago, I came to council so I was cleaning up my office. Well, that task has been completed. And I came across uh, a document that was kind of warm to my heart, and that was the oath of office when I was on council. Um, and that, and that, uh, that document stated that as I took the oath that I was up, uphold the Constitution of the United States and of the state of uh, North Carolina. And my daughter, who was over here, had asked me, she says, Dad, what would happen if, um, if a council member um, didn't read the Constitution of, the North, of North Carolina and of the United States? And I said, well, they, they couldn't uphold their, their office. They couldn't do their duty. And they would, they would fulfill the office by, by gut. And I said, you know, the laws of this country and this state is not made that way because then we will we will be going from meeting to meeting just trying to do the right thing by gut and i said we just wasn't it wasn't made that way because we will be following the strongest person at that meeting we're supposed to be following the law and i said the law doesn't have any friends that's why lady justice has a blindfold when you go into the courtroom you go in there to do what's said in, in the law we do what's in the statutes, and that's what we do from day to day, week to week. And what, what caught my attention was, there was a thing about reclusing, uh, one council member was, was supposed to recluse themselves, and the principal law was based on to recluse yourself if you get a direct benefit, financial benefit from what you're doing. And, and this particular council member's wife was running, volunteering her time for a committee which had no direct financial benefit. So if the law was followed, there would have been no question of what to recluse yourself on, and that's the beauty of following the law. 
is that you follow the law, not the gut, and you're always on the right track. So if you're volunteering your time, there's never a problem. And to the other part, where the... Ten seconds, sir. Where the other person was, was accused of not knowing the state statute, if, if that was true, that's a shame that was brought up in social media. Time's but up, we Mr. should Daniels. follow what we took that oath of office on. Thank you very much. Samantha Towns. Good evening, Ms. Towns. Yes. Good evening, Council. My name is Samantha Towns, 104 Pine Lake. Um, I just wanted to give the staff and Jason kudos on the Family Fun Day. It was so nice to see all of the residents and children out enjoying themselves. And I think it was a very, very nice event. Also, I think there's been enough division in this country, and I am happy to see, for all of the years that I've attended town council meeting, to see a council that's working together for the benefit of the town, and a town manager who, is, who supports our town 100%, and the council supports him, and as a citizen, you guys are great. Um, <clears throat> I hope that um, things will remain the same. The presentation, you know, regarding the downtown area is very similar to the areas that are spreading out throughout the country. Even New York sort of has that similar plan. And one of the things that people you know, as residents will have to get into their heads that things are changing. Um, I watched New York change for decades and decades, and now it's Indian Trail's time. And with you guys running the town, Indian Trail will be a great town. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Towns. This time I'll close the public comment period. Brings us to our law enforcement update, Captain Coble. The floor is yours, sir. I'm gonna adhere to the three minute rule as well tonight. Patrick told me he was keeping us all here till about midnight, so I'm not gonna be blamed for that. So I passed along in front of you a, a couple of things. Just These are just screenshots of recent postings that we've had things going on here in town. We've been pretty busy here lately. Um, on the back page of got January through April put out in a uh, call for service by self-initiated activity by a uh, average response time and average on scene time for the north and south sides of town. A little chart there. Um, probably the biggest thing last week on Tuesday we had some motor vehicle break-ins that uh, some guys got arrested. We had three uh, guys out of Charlotte that got stopped. They were breaking into cars in Ashland subdivision and over in Stylings, and a Stylings officer got him on a traffic stop and was able to get some, recover some property about four o'clock in the morning that we went around and started going and knocking on doors and waking people up. So that turned out to be a good cooperative effort between our guys and them that night to, to get those folks picked up. We've had a uh, armed robbery recently at the food line on 74 out there at Faith Church Road. Um, got some good pictures pushed out on that on social media, getting some information back on. So hopefully, uh, hopefully Facebook will catch, a, catch up with them here before long and we can get some tips on that. And then I've got a, a screenshot, Kevin Susevich Sr. retired from us this, uh, this I guess on uh, the 31st of May was his last working day. So Kevin's gonna be a, an asset missed up here, but we've just been uh, busy over there in the building working, busy lining up contractors and subcontractors and hoping to get floor cover and put down pretty soon. We're gonna refloor that whole entire building uh, with new, new carpet and uh, new wood flooring in the uh, lobby or the uh, wood laminate looking floor and commercial grade and doing the uh, LED ceiling lights and all. So we get that thing wrapped up here in the next few weeks and the internet uh, fiber line has been, it's been pulled into the building. 
they brought it to the building for us. I crawled up and pulled it through late Friday evening and got it into the server room for our IT folks. So hopefully that network grid is going to be finished up being built by the end of this uh, this uh, month. That is a pretty complex issue from what I understand, not being a computer mechanic myself. Um, the, apparently it takes a lot to push all that data from our car cameras back and forth to the main office and to the government center. So that's going to be a good good fixed asset once they get that network built there into that downtown area. So hopefully we might end up talking with Adam and, and uh, looking at if it needs to move over this way. I think it's going to have a little bit more speed to it and a little bit more uh, movability and capacity back and forth than what we've got in this current building here. So uh, long and short, we're just moving forward a lot of different projects right now wrapping up the end of the year. So anybody got anything? I, I do have a, <clears throat> a comment to make. Uh, yes. uh, Captain Chase, we, we thank you very much. He, he provided the town with 10 radios that uh, Parks and Recs are using yeah. and uh, our construction crew. We're talking about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 system. So we just want to say thank you for doing so that. So I kind of didn't, but I helped facilitate. <laughs> and jo Johnny helped with that back there, too. Uh, I'm, I'm, give him I'm, I'm sorry, that. Johnny. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so just in a nutshell, Johnny... Johnny and I sit on the uh, radio committee for the county, um, and the radio network in this region is a pretty complex system, and it you know goes all the way from Gaston County into Union County, um, and, and Charlotte's a big part of that. But we have a committee locally that sits together to adopt our rules and procedures, how we utilize the radio software and system locally, and then we also participate in going to meetings in Charlotte with everybody from the region. So we had to get together, and, and I say Johnny was a big part of it. We had a unanimous vote on getting a couple of channels built into the network system for Indian Trail. Um, so that was the first thing. This has been about a four-month, I guess, project that we've been working on. So we got that unanimously done locally. Then our radio tech was able to build those channels in there. So the channels, the radios that you guys have, um, we were going to get them given to the town, but that turned out to be it's kind of like giving you a car and then not giving you any gas or the insurance money. So the better thing to do was to put them on a loan. That way when you have a problem like what we had last week and a knob gets knocked off or a button gets messed up, then you give it back to me. I get it to the county radio guy. He repairs it, fixes it, and sends it back. That way you don't have to have a Motorola contract. You don't have to have a lot of the uh, service agreements and things like that. You're just a user of the radio. So that way the parts and rec and the public works can communicate. If one of the guys leaves from here and drives to the, to the county landfill on Austin Cheney Road outside of Winget, and, you know, Adam needs to call him about something. He can call him on that radio. It's not like a little walkie-talkie by at Walmart where you're going to run out of range with it. They used them the other day from what Jay was telling me out at the, uh, the event. So um, we've got 10, a bank of 10 radios here, and hopefully that will get the day-to-day -day operations going on to where everybody can communicate without having to call five different times on a cell phone. And then, you know, whenever you have an event, you pull all of them together and give them to the event staff to use over there. We did go ahead and, and decide to incorporate a channel on those radios um, all the way at the very end to where if they're out there working an event, they see an accident or incident happen, a kid break their leg or something, uh, the town employee can switch directly over and call straight to the 911 center on the radio rather than having to pick up the phone and try to call. Um, so we thought that would be a good good thing to have out there for them as well, you know, whenever they're doing events. Or if public works is out cutting down a tree and something happens, heaven forbid, then some of the guys can switch straight over and have a direct line into them. So, as we continue building that system, we'll have radio interoperability to where I can switch over, call Mike Ryder, call Adam or somebody direct from my radio as well. So we're working, still moving forward with some of that stuff, but it was cooperative effort between everybody involved. So thank you, guys. One, one other quick thing, uh, Chase, I wanted to thank you guys. I know I wasn't there for Family Fun Day, uh, and a lot of the, you guys were. So um, you guys did a wonderful job you know, directing traffic. A lot of the things that people don't see and just assume that it happens. And uh, w one of the reasons that I'm, I'm bringing it up to your attention is uh, I went to one of my favorite restaurants, Steak and Hoagie, uh, last week and ran into Hayden and um, ran into Lieutenant um, Murray, Malcolm. Murray, yeah, and uh, they were sitting there, and I, I, of course, I spoke with them, and they were working on next year. And, uh, you know, racking their heads about uh, making it better next year. Uh, it was the first year that we'd ever did that. It was a tremendous success. I think most people would say it was a 99 on a 100 scale. 
and you guys are trying to work to make a make it a hundred on a hundred scale about how to move traffic out better next time and and maybe get a few more guys because you you were you weren't expecting quite the crowd that showed up but you know those are just some of the things that you guys do other than your normal job of going out here and catching bad guys and um, you know speeders and that type thing is you're helping the community with traffic and just let you know how much we appreciate you so if it went well then i appreciate that i, I had all the credit to do with that i was out of town that day <laughs> pass it on if it didn't go well at all then i was out of town that day <laughs> but no malcolm and hayden worked together to, to uh to do their where all of the events they worked together on doing the uh, site plans forward to make sure that we feel like we've got a good safe event and then after the event they do an after action review to where they sit down and correspond back and forth to say oh my gosh we weren't planning on this happening but it did happen but I was uh, reading Patrick's manager's report and saw the number of tweets and uh, postings and things that went out to help boost the uh, the uh, Family Fun Day event out on social media and chuckled because I remember Malcolm saying, I don't know that anybody stayed at home around here that day. <laughs> they all showed up. So now I know why. So I think overall it was a good good event. It sounded like it was well attended. So. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you all. That brings us to the consent agenda. If there's no changes, I'll need a motion to approve, please. I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Morris made the motion to approve. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion carries. Brings us to item nine, public hearings. First item on the uh, letter A, FY1819 budget. Mr. Sadek. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and, and, and Council, we always talk about the budget. You always mention Patrick and you always mention our uh, finance director, but just for a few, few seconds, I would like our staff to stand up and show you all the folks that got involved in putting the budget together. Can, can you please stand? They're all here today. I just want to say thanks to all of you, but uh, they, all, they all got involved. And we, I, I do have a few slides with you, and I'm not going to take more than five minutes, but when we provided you with the budget, we did not provide, sort of we didn't elaborate a lot on our goals. Uh, uh, but uh, Jim and I and staff, we kind of put bit this together. What we're looking for, we're looking for a balanced proposed budget with the right pri priorities that does not increase taxes. And we're looking into improving our roadways to help get them better jobs and healthier lives. Responsible and sustainable budget. Funding key priorities, not any projects. And we're also looking into incentive designed to recruit major new businesses because uh, uh, our, our economic director, uh, economic coordinator and staff doing an excellent job trying to promote businesses in town and also record the rainy day funding to prepare for future natural disaster. We'll work closely with Johnny and, and Chase for any tropical storm, any flooding. So we want to make sure that we have some funds out there for that. Annual operating costs is slightly increased to offset cost of living only. A portion of tax revenue collected will be earmarked to cover any existing or new debt issuance. This is mainly for our loans and bonds. No revenue neutral tax shift is incorporated, fair, fairness to commercial and, re, and residential and industrial, and target business climate favorable to job creation. Uh, last time we were asked by council, if I remember it was uh, uh, Mr. Morse, uh, that what will happen, uh, you know, uh, with our new budget, and we kept elaborating on the six ratios that local uh, govern, government uh, commission in Raleigh uh, look at. So Jim contacted a professor in Raleigh and worked very closely with him. And you could look at all six ratios. We do have positive on the sides. We, we are doing good and what that does. Now this is for FY17 and 18 uh, model, so we're looking uh, to make sure that FY18 and 19 is the same. So if you look at all these six six uh, uh, 
ratios, they're all positive, and you don't see a lot of that within our region. Uh, and we're going to try to continue that uh, so when we get to the end of FY18-19, we keep all these positive. And what that does, uh, also a question in the past was asked that what would happen to our rating. From what we're planning on doing and the budget that we propose for you guys, that rating will remain the same. And if, if we get more commercial, residential, and businesses in town, that is going to raise our tax base. And as we're paying our debts on our bonds, what that does, it might take us probably one step higher in the Moody rating. Uh, the first thing we'd like to see, we, we would like to say is thank you to council. Uh, uh, never resist, never revisit their instance. All of you guys, you, you, you don't take too much time. You turn around and give us the right response and the right support. Bipartisan backing, voting overwhelm, w w overwhelmingly without stiff opposition. We, we thank you for doing that and thank you for the support. Our investment last year on the money that we have, which is sometimes we talk about fund balance, you hear about fund balance. Jim does an excellent job taking that money and moving it, move it around. He tries to get some higher interest rate. So we are about a quarter million dollars. This is the amount of money we made last year. So that money could be used for projects, paying debts, you name it. So we, we will come back before council and let you know where we're going to spend that money and get your approval. <clears throat> on projects, the voters approved, finance bonding, mainly traditional infrastructure. I shared with you guys one time a chart that shows parks and it shows transportation and other items. But if you remember, the highest bar was transportation. And that's what we talk about all the time, transportation, traffic congestions, because that, that's very related to every development that we get in town. And uh, no ambitious. No, no price hike and fresh cost. That means that's the latest cost we will have for any of these projects. So we continue sharing these items with you guys. None are destined to failure and no sane approach. We're, we're going to take very conservative approach for every one of these projects. And the overruns on them are measurable and miniature. Uh, economic development, we're looking into increasing commercial to keep pace with the residential. And we've heard that from many developers. And more smart, controlled growth. And uh, uh, presently, uh, Council Member uh, Moores and Council Member uh, uh, Head, which has taken the lead, we're working closely with, with the uh, jurisdiction and, and mainly to come up with smart growth, good transportation system with smart growth. A modern Southern style identity that is cemented to the area. Uh, yeah, modern stuff is okay, but we would like to kind of keep the brick colonial type, the, the stuff that matches the uh, current development that we have right now. You know, not too much a change between one and another. The environment, we're, we're looking at a cleaner and more efficient transportation <laughs> approach. Uh, least or no impact to our ecological sen sensitive culture, natural resources. We are responsible for the floodplains. You heard the developers today talking about water quality. We will not approve, uh, I know Todd is here today, we don't approve any project right now without water quality. So uh, he's our policeman when it comes to water quality. Finance, uh, authorization are, are subject to annual authorization. And what we mean by that is if you give us approval on a project that spans multi-years, we still come to you every year to make sure we get your approval and keep you up to date about the project and its fundings. Always on cold stands. And what we mean, what we cold stand, standby. And what we mean by that is we do have contingencies. That's why we have our fund balance and that's why we have contingencies in every project. And no funding gaps, no ways to raise uh, 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 more revenue and make tough choices to <coughs> cut spending. And we do have a slide at the end that will show you what we're trying to do. A procurement process, best value procurement process that's con conducted in a full compliance with applicable laws, which does not violate the agency's government statutes and solicitation specs. Ms. Karen right here keeps us in track, and also Miranda back there. She stays on top of us to make sure all the contracts are in compliance. 
A&E, uh, architect, archi architectural and engineering, and uh, the M&A mainly big companies that they, they have major, uh, uh, mergers and acquisition. They're the best in the country these days. Those, those big engineering firms that they, they merge together, uh, what they're trying to do, they're trying to look for geographical area where they could expand their services and then their expertise. Our approach is the most ideal solution with sustainability. Anytime we hear that word sustainability, meaning we're looking at the environment, we're looking at energy. If not, uh, Piedmont Natural Gas could provide the line in Uptown Charlotte that could provide this big development that you heard about today, that would be uh, a good one. And then economic is, is, is another uh, sustainable factor. Human resources, uh, uh, I tell you, I've, I've been in this business for 41 years. Uh, the staff that you see right here, they're the most professional. I've, I've, I enjoy working with, they do contribute a lot and I'm, I'm very proud of staff. It's not only Patrick, you always hear the town manager, town manager of Jim, but here they are, they, they, they get all the credit. And I just wanted to share that with council. Uh, maintenance and repair, uh, Adam and I and the rest of the team, we're gonna be working on quality maintenance for our facilities with low cost. And uh, just to give you a prime example, if you look in the back parking lot back there, they put 20 parking spaces concrete in seven days. And I, I guarantee you they're $20,000 be, be, be below any contract. And this is the second time they do it. They, they done it in front of the ADA uh, parkings and they done it in, this, in the back this week. So thank you, Adam and staff. Development plan and review, Rox is, is uh, working very heavily. He does have a good system right now that provide instant access to public data online leverage integrated platform system to seamless, seamlessly share data, eliminate bottlenecks with electronic document review and automated no notification and status updates. I hope I wasn't wrong on that one. Your InfoVision <coughs> system that we use right now, that's the intent. And uh, I, would, I would like to turn this one to Mr. Evans. Gary's been with us for almost two weeks and he got paid too, so. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I would like him to cover this slide. Uh, very exciting stuff, and uh, we do thank him for, for all the efforts that he's been doing just for two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Finally, we have an update for economic development for Indian Trail. It's a pleasure to be before council, uh, Mr. Mayor, town manager, and our town attorney. Um, it's been it's been tough, or not, it's been a lot of work, uh, and it has been tough getting acclimated um, uh, to this position, but I'm very excited uh, about the developments that we've had so far. Um, I have made a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails in the past two weeks, and we've had uh, great success. Um, it, it's exciting to hear developers um, and even bankers that are excited about doing business with the Indian Trail. Um, I've, I've made these contacts, uh, this is with two banks, uh, two commercial brokers, um, eight commercial developers, one daycare school, um, five hotel developers, one light industrial, two local developers, and 18 retailers. Um, the way I base mine is that I've made 45 positive contacts. And by a positive contact means that I've reached out or they've reached out to me and we've had um, communication back and forth. And um, out of that, I've developed 17 face-to-face meet -face meetings. That's about 38% of the, of the contacts. So it's a very good ratio. Um, the rest of this week, we have booked up solid. Um, I have three major uh, developers from Charlotte coming in uh, to talk about some, some big development. Um, and that's, that's about it. But again, I'm, I'm very excited about the future of Indian Trail and I look forward to working with you guys. Do you have any questions? I, have a, I don't have a question, I, I just have a comment. And um, you know, I've, I've been up here for a long, 
longer than anybody, but um, and I, I've seen us go through an economic development department where we were spending a lot of money on economic development, and then I saw us go to the, um, you know, the county and, 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 and rely on them. And um, I, I say this from the bottom of my heart, and I mean this, and you know I mean this, and I, I mean this about all the staff that I'm getting ready to talk about, and, and that sometimes you usually wait, and you're not here at the end when we always talk about you, but um, all of you, I mean, we're so fortunate to have every dog on one of you. I mean, uh, I just, uh, I mean, I don't know why Indian Trail got so darn lucky to get all these good people, <laughs> but uh, we did, and um, I'm thankful. Make, you make our job very, very, very easy. But one of the things I wanted to say to you, Gary, is, is I think the council got a little criticism because because Gary was a past council member that, that we got a little uh, uh, criticism for, for bringing Gary on and, and doing this job. You've done more in two weeks than I've seen done in six years in, in, um, in commercial and in the economic development department. And... Um, I'm not right very often, but by God, I was right when, when I voted yes for you because, and I Thank think you. everybody else on here too, because you're one in a million. You're, you fit into this crowd perfectly. Thank you. And um, I appreciate you. And, and I got to say also, uh, Rox and, and Rox's staff have been excellent in, in cooperating with everything that I need. It makes my job much easier. I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for you and all of you for what all you do. You're welcome. Uh, little comment, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, and I think many developers, especially the ones that we're dealing with from out of town, uh, they shared with us this comment that, that they've never seen, and this is something uh, Gary's taken the lead with, they have never, never seen or had somebody on board that uh, reach out to them. Usually it's the other way. Usually, usually the, the, the developer reaches out to town staff. But it is for this, in this particular case, they were very excited and they liked the way that the town is sending, sending a representative to meet with them to come and talk to town. So I just wanted to add that to what Gary was saying. Thank you, sir. Uh, the last slide. And like I promised, I won't spend too much time. Uh, what you're looking at here, what we're showing you is savings that's been accomplished and savings that underway and savings that we, we're planning on doing during FY 18 and 19. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, by council supporting our Indian Trail Complete Street, but by allowing us to do the design and house and hire a roadway engineer, that's 500K out of, out of the project cost. We'll take it and put it back in the cost. Down hall parking, we saved 15,000. Crooked Creek ADA parking, 15,000. Beacon Hills, you guys approved uh, uh, $270,000 to purchase property and do one of those seven alternatives. We took a stab at it, uh, we cleaned the channel. I hope, uh, Mrs. Howe, we didn't flood yesterday with the rain. <laughs> I don't think we got any rain okay, yesterday. Good, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that yourself and, and, and uh, the neighbors are happy with yes. what, what uh, the contractor did. So that's the $200,000. Let's keep our fingers crossed. If we do have an issue out there, we'll go spend some more money <coughs> to make it better. New Town Hall, uh, we reported to you guys about six weeks ago, as Jim reported, 400 k in <coughs> savings. Uh, Treywick. Todd, if I'm not mistaken, at least $33,000 on that project, right, or no? Right. Down Hall Outdoor Furniture, 5K, Veterans Memorial, the design and the concept, about 20K. Any consultant will charge you probably uh, uh, $20,000. $20, ABC, hopefully, we'll, we're working with the ABC. We, we could uh, get uh, a larger distribution. Union County Economic Development, we, uh, you know, the $250,000 that we were going to pay to Union County, we kept it in-house. So that's, that's a quarter million dollars. Sardis Road Roundabout, at least $50,000 we're targeting. Chestnut Parkway Phase 3, another 50, 50K. Lemon Property, I, I don't exaggerate about that, but if, if the developer comes up with his proposal with the hotel and the apartment and council, like it and sign off on it. Uh, that's 100, approximately 90 to 100 parking spaces at 15,000 apiece. 
that by itself $1.35 million if we want to go out there and build our own parking lot. Old Town Hall, the same thing with all uh, the parkings that we added in the project that Adam is working on, that will total at least 550k in savings. The, the multi-use trail that you approved for us, $80,000, hopefully Adam could get it at 60 if we do it in-house. Uh, that will save us 20. And new development uh, pocket parks, if we continue encouraging developers to give us some land out there for FY 18, 19, at least the price of that land will be about half a million dollar. And we're trying to save at least $200,000 on both trail projects that we're doing surveillance on. So uh, this number at the bottom could be a bit imaginary, but if we work hard and we make the savings, you're looking at $4.75 million. So that, uh, that's the end of my presentation, and thank you for your support, and uh, thank you, staff, and hopefully we'll accomplish, accomplish our goals. Any questions? Just another comment. I'll quit making comments, but that might be why Indian Trail has the lowest tax rate of any size to town mm -hmm. uh, of its size anywhere. So, and and um, um, I think the residents, uh, most of them know what uh, it's. Uh, we we have a great tax rate in this town, and and uh, and that's part of the reason of it is the hard work that they put into it to keep it that way. Now, we're here before you tonight to uh, ask your, uh, uh, if you could, uh, if you don't have any issues with the budget, uh, we're looking for adoption. This is the last session we're having for the budget. And if you approve it and adopt it, we'll move forward into uh, adding any other documentation to the document that we share with you. We only had one change that we made since we uh, shared with you uh, the budget. We did have uh, Adam and his crew had a couple part-time employees, uh, but we, we have difficulty of hiring part-time construction workers. So what we're asking council, if they're okay with that, we would like to take those positions and make it one permanent position. And Kerry, if I'm not mistaken, there is a slight increase in benefit when you take a person from uh, part-time and make it a full-time. So, but but the benefit cost ratio is better because the employee is on board, the job is attractive, and they know it's a permanent position rather than being a temporary position. So uh, uh, that's the only change we made since we shared the budget uh, documents with you last time. So we're asking council today if they're okay uh, with what we propose to approve and adopt the budget. Correct, Jim? Karen? To, I mean, today is what is the public hearing for the budget. Then we need to open a public hearing and Very have a public comments. hearing. And That's right. Sorry. Yes. Well, Sorry. I, I, I did open a public hearing when we first started for, for the budget. Item A in public hearings. Okay, then we need to continue the public hearing. Let's do yes. it formally so that we make sure that it's on the record that we're continuing the public hearing on the budget ordinance for 2018-19 and ask if anybody would like to speak. Okay. Yes, um, we're continuing this public hearing. At this time, I'm going to close the public comments portion since no one signed up to speak at the hearing for public comments. Uh, any discussion by council on the proposed budget? If there's no further discussion or presentations, we can call for a vote. Close the public hearing. And did you just close it? Yes, okay. I closed it. Uh, council, it's up if you want to call, for, if you want to vote at this time or. Mayor, I just have a, I just I want to make sure we cover all our bases, and um, I, I I don't know that that we did did we do a public comment for for um. During the, the hearing, budget? you always have public comments. The sign-up sheet. Nobody signed up for the. Okay, so nobody signed up. Nobody signed up, and I closed the public and I officially closed the public comments portion. So now it's back in the hands, just as it has been in the past. It's back in your hands. Erica, we at? Oh, excuse me. Mr. Could Cohen? we ask if anybody wanted to sign up? That's that entirely up to the council, uh, usually 6.30. Would it be on the agenda? It is on the agenda. It is on the agenda under a public hearing. And I think typically you, 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 you council may have a couple comments, and then it's open for public comments, public comments, and then they close it. And then council may have more comments than a motion. It's no different than we've done. 
Gotcha. I just want to make sure we're doing it right. So that's yes, fine. If council wants to offer anyone in the audience if they, that's yes. entirely up to you. Okay. At this time, is there anyone that would like to speak? I'll reopen the public comments. If anyone would like to speak in the um, budget, please step forward and sign the sheet. I have. Oh, you may have signed the wrong sheet. Okay. Ms. Towns, did you want to speak? Yes. Same okay. rules apply for okay. public um, Samantha Towns. My address is on file. Um, after attending the workshops and listening and listen to the revisions, et cetera, I think that um, the council and especially the staff has done a wonderful job on this year's budget. And all of the council members were present for the workshops. So uh, my recommendation would be to pass it with whatever minor modifications that you have. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make one last go around. Is anyone else in the audience like to speak? If not, I'll close the public comments portion once again. Council, any comments? If not, there'll be a motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. A lot of hard work by the staff to go into creating this budget, and um, and, I'm, and I'm happy to say that y'all did take our concerns and into consideration. Uh, one of the biggest concerns that I do have is that I am a very staunch proponent of reducing debt and uh, in, improve our infrastructure, and and both those things don't don't necessarily can happen or can't happen at the same time, but possibly it could. So I'm just uh, hoping that this council will be um, open-minded that if we do find some additional monies that we're smart with them and we address our needs more importantly than the wants that um, has happened in past councils. Other than that, I'm, I'm really like the, I like the budget. And I'm good with the, um, the two part-times turning into a full-time position especially when I heard on the news, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, there is a shortage of construction workers. So you might want to get one while he's available. Any other comments? I do. Ms. Howe? <clears throat> Most of you don't know this, but we had um, a meeting with the council uh, with Patrick, and he went over the budget where I understood what was going on use graphs instead of, you know, the numbers. It, it was just so easy to absorb. And he took the time with all of us to do that, and um, I appreciate that. And he's always looking to save a dollar. I can assure you of that. But we're glad to have him, too. Thank you. And Jim, don't, let's not forget and Jim, Jim and his staff, to, who, who did a lot of hard work on this budget and uh, uh, did, a, did a marvelous job. But I'd like to make a motion to... Uh, adopt it. Ms. Cohn's made the motion to adopt the uh, fiscal year 18-19 budget. Can we also add to that motion to set the tax rate as unchanged mm -hmm. from last I year? I like that. Yeah, and the tax rate is unchanged, and it has been unchanged for, I think, about six years now, six or seven years. It's, it hasn't changed or somewhere close to that. So. Okay, Ms. Uh, Cohn's made anyway. the motion to adopt the budget for fiscal year 18, 19, with, with, no, no, with, the, with, with the tax rate remaining unchanged. Unchanged. All in favor, that would be passed unanimously. Job well done, council. Job, excellent Thanks, job by the staff. Mr. Sadek. Thank you, sir. Great job. Thank you. Budget pass. That brings us to our second public hearing. Item B, close right of way, which is a resolution ordering the closing of right of ways, resolution number one, First Baptist Church. Mr. Sadek. I'm gonna take a break and turn it to our attorney. How about that? That's fine. All right, so um, we received a request from the owner of property, uh, the First Baptist Church who owns property. There are platted right-of-ways that have never been constructed um, on a former plat. They have asked us to abandon those as they are going to use that property for a different purpose. Um, this resolution is part of the statutory procedure we began 
uh, probably about over a month ago, I believe it's a four, it's a thirty day process. But this is what um, so the town will be abandoning um, platted right of ways. Again, never been built into a road or anything um, at the request of the property owner. Okay, council, have any questions? This time I'll close the public comments as no one signed up to speak unless someone here wishes to speak at this time. Nope. Public comments will be closed. If there's no further discussion, we'll need a motion on this. Council? I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Morse has made a motion to approve the request of First Baptist Church to close the right of way. All in favor? That would pass unanimously. Thank you. Brings us to our third public hearing, conditional rezoning, item CZ2017-0153, which is 6714 Seacrest Shortcut Road, multiple parcels, 89 acres, ordinance number 286. Rocks, I yield the floor to you, sir. Welcome. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. It's good to be before you this evening. It's a great accomplishment of adopting our budget unanimously, and uh, I think it's a, uh, very exciting to be here, part of that. But on to other business, which is uh, the first item being conditional rezoning case 2017-0153. And this is for a conditional rezoning for a site on uh, off Seacrest Shortcut Road. The, uh, project is, the project area encompasses approximately 89 acres. Uh, and is located on Bonterra Village Way. That's the new access road that was constructed as part of the Monroe Expressway, and it is in uh, operation. Uh, the existing zoning is single-family residential one. The proposed zoning is conditional uh, single-family residential four. The applicant is Seacrest Ventures, LLC. The underlying intent is to construct 196 uh, age-restricted uh, homes and yielding a density of approximately 2.19 units per acre. Okay, just to give you some familiarity of the project site, the first one is if, if we were stepping off of uh, Bonterra Village Way, the expressway is uh, to our back, we're looking straight onto the site, that's the photo on your left. It's a parcel that's both wooded and has been cleared in the past. Then if you were to just turn around 180 degrees, you'd have the image uh, on the lower uh, right. That, that would be, you're looking at um, portions of the expressway and uh, Bonterra Village Way. And again, if you were to look uh, north, heading towards Hemby Bridge from on Bonterre Village Way, that's what you'd see on the left. And to the right, if you were looking towards Sardis Road uh, on Bonterre Village Way, that's the image you would see. And I think the structure to your right there is one of the new uh, or upcoming tolling machines. Okay. From a zoning standpoint, as I mentioned, single-family residential one is encompassed <coughs> on the subject property that is identified in red. It's located adjacent to the Bonterra neighborhood, which is single-family residential five. From a comprehensive plan standpoint, the uh, subject property is identified as being intended for medium density residential uses. That encompasses a density range between two and four uh, dwelling units per acre. So if you go back to the proposed density of 2.19, that'd be on the lower end of that spectrum. As you may be aware, there's an expressway under construction in the vicinity of this project site. Uh, it's anticipated to be opening, I believe, the end of uh, November 2018. Um, also, just from a his, uh, his uh, context standpoint, you know, the Indian Trail and Union County have engaged on a joint uh, land use study of this area, to, given the express, the uh, presence of the expressway and the other developments that may be occurring. Um, so we are working on a joint plan. This rezoning was submitted before that plan really got kicked off. And uh, this would be the first project uh, that's located on Bonterra Village Way, first new project. Okay, so now the, the most important feature is really the concept plan. So again, just from, from background, you're looking at roughly 89 acres, 196 dwelling units. You've got two primary entryways into the community. There is a third cul-de-sac street just to the, you know, to, to the north. It's kind of an isolated section. Uh, we're you know, aware of the expressway it's coming and the potential for you know, noise or, or light issues, and the uh, applicant has uh, proposed a seven-foot landscape berm along Bonterra Village Way to help provide some mitigation you know, against that. 
the uh, help to help with uh, traffic and uh, mitigate traffic impacts in the area, the applicant did prepare a traffic study, and they can talk more about that in detail. But it is proposing uh, left turn lanes on Bonterra Village Way into the two primary entryways into the uh, community. As you can kind of tell on the plan, this site backs up to the floodplain, and they are attempting to kind of maximize that by in incorporating tra a comprehensive trail system into the neighborhood. Now, one distinction from the, the council has seen earlier versions uh, of this plan during the open workshops. Uh, one distinction from the earlier plans to this one is uh, there was a, a site previously identified as a potential future town park site that has since been converted to just private open space. And that's that, that area, I think it's roughly 10 acres uh, on the bottom uh, right. And from a lot type standpoint, the lots in this community are going to be generally around 50 foot wide and 125 foot deep. Okay. Architecture uh, is, is certainly uh, very important, and I know the council considered it to be an important topic during the workshops. Uh, the, the developer has indicated that the homes will be modeled on the Bonterra's um, patio home concept that's uh, in develop or in existence today. And so they've shared these photos, uh, which will represent what they intend to construct. It's a combination of uh, masonry uh, materials with uh, cementitious board siding on the front and sides and rear. And uh, this is a little bit of a departure from some earlier suggestions that council had about wanting to see kind of full brick and, and uh, on the fronts and sides. So, but this is a representation, this is what they have put forth in terms of uh, what they intend to construct. Okay, as with all of our uh, conditional rezonings, we do have a community meeting process to solicit input. We held, uh, the, the first meetings were held in February of this year. Uh, these were the required meetings by the town. Uh, kind of light attendance, only four people attended and just had very basic questions of what will the, pro you know, the project look like and you know, will the project affect uh, their, their property or property values. Now as part of the council workshop process, council asked uh, the developer to hold a second meeting in, in May of this year. Uh, it was held at a local church and approximately 20 attendees uh, participated. I believe uh, most of those were Bonterra residents and they asked a lot more questions, uh, but some key ones were the age restriction concept that's being proposed, you know, what kind of architecture is going to be in place, what, who's the builder, and the, uh, the timing of the project. And again, as I mentioned, you know, this, uh, the Secrets of Interest has been before the town council through in two workshops, one in March and one in May. Uh, conditions on the project, it's a conditional rezoning, so there will be conditions of approval. Uh, the developer has agreed to all staff's suggestions for uh, conditions. However, there were two deviations based on some earlier council uh, feedback. One was, again, looking into a wall to be provided along Bonterra Village Way. The developer looked at that but still wants to move forward with the seven-foot landscape berm. And then again, the previous uh, home designs in terms of uh, the materials used. And, and I did get alerted that there's a slight typo in the uh, ordinance that's before you um, regarding the materials that will be used on the size that the, the uh, uh, masonry materials may be used. They, they will not be required. Planning board, planning board heard this item in March, uh, on March 20th. They found it to be consistent with comprehensive plan with land use and housing and economic development and found it overall to be a reasonable request. And I'll go ahead and read to you the findings that they developed as part of that process. The uh, request will give the opportunity to establish a unique identity uh, in this area by incorporating the natural features of the area, including the stream and existing vegetation into the development with a trail network. The project promotes uh, compatibility of land uses between adjacent residential communities and properties within adjacent jurisdictions, it increases the diversity of housing choices within Indian Trail, and proposes high quality design to promote attractive community development. It's a reasonable request and it is, and it is in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the uh, Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan in the areas of quality of life as well as land use and housing, and it's consistent with the, it's consistent with the adopted plans of the Town of Indian Trail. Okay. And I'm just going to ask that you receive this presentation. Uh, the developer, is, oops, sorry, the developer is here, and I believe they do wish to make a presentation. And there uh, may be folks that want to sign up for uh, public comments. And we've left the the uh, two-step adoption process if you so choose to adopt this uh, rezoning. And I'll take any questions. Questions for Rox? Rox, when will the rezoning be completed by, by the Town of Indian Trail in Union County? When will these, the small area plan? Yeah. I believe that's slated for uh, August. Okay. Yes. Okay. And what was the planning board vote? 
Do you there, know the, uh, the the vote on the on this action? I believe the final vote was four to three Correct. to recommend approval. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Just qu quick, Ross. You made a, 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 a statement. You said, and I, I think it was whether it was masonry or not. Yes, sir. And you said it <clears throat> may be opposed to required. That's correct. If I'm not mistaken. What does that mean? I mean, so, uh, maybe opposed to require mm -hmm. means uh, if you don't require it, they can do anything they want to. Is that is that basically is that what what that means, or uh, is that? Let me clarify. I, I was probably going really a little a little faster, so I apologize. Uh, so, the way the ordinance the ordinance that's before you uh, that's proposed for adoption has a, a condition that says the sides of the homes shall be of uh, a brick or masonry construction. And uh, Ms. C just alerted me that that was a typo. It should be the sides of the homes may be uh, brick masonry construction. And so that's how it was, it was proposed uh, by the applicant. Gotcha. And so I apologize if I went through that too fast. No, it's me. Rock, you yes. the applicant? Yes. Would like to speak? Absolutely. Any, okay. Good evening, Council, and thank you once again for an opportunity to come before you. Um, we've been in front of you guys twice. I know Mayor Pro Tem was at our um, HOA meeting, so I'm, I'm not sure there's a whole lot we can add unless you have specific questions. I would like to mention just a couple things. One is you asked about what the planning board vote was. I think at the time, and Rox, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at the time, planning board voted on this we presented it to them as age targeted not age fully age restricted um, that was one of the things that we decided to change after hearing some of your um, concerns and and we have actually gone above and beyond that um, with the fully age restricted um, we're going to be able to provide a product that that will have less impact on schools and less impact on traffic and um, be able to um, develop a, a neighborhood that we feel will be very um, acceptable and and important to the town Indian Trail. Different. Um, we're going to do very nice clubhouse, pool, pickleball courts, walking trails. I mean, we're really gearing this thing to the 55 and older um, people, of which I fit well in. But. Um, I did want you to know we, we have listened to you. We did took your advice. We sent out um, invites to the three neighborhoods and had a meeting, called them all in. There were about 20 people there out of those 20. And tell me if I'm wrong, I didn't only heard two negative comments. And it really was not about the product, either either one. So um, I feel felt good about that when we left. and. I do have our engineers here. If you have any any more any further questions you want to ask of me or of them, I'll be more than happy to introduce them to you and um, fire away. Mr. Yeah. Yeah, you piqued my interest. What were the two negative comments? Uh, One was, was about uh, was a personal comment about the developer. Mm -hmm. One was about how big a check we were going to write to the town Indian Trail for using the roads. That was. The two comments. Um, Pretty negative. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? No. Uh, at this time, I'll ask anyone if they want to sign up for public comments. No, if not, I'll close the public comments portion. If there's no further discussion amongst the council, we'll need a motion or two motions. Mr. Cohn. Did you, were you going to make a motion? I, was, I had a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, Mr. McIntyre picked me up Saturday morning. Was it last Saturday or the previous Saturday? And we, uh, we drove over to the said property, and he showed me where this was going to be built, which I think is a, it's a, a, a great idea for us to do that in the future is to put eyes on it versus looking at the pictures here. But one of the, the questions I had, there was a power line. A, um, a large transmission line, I believe, that was running through that where I saw the zoning signs. Right. Is that splitting this project? And because I could not tell from the map. Um, I can show you. 
It is. Sorry. It follows. It goes through. You see the lower part. It actually goes through the ten acres that we talked about. Here. You're right there. That's. That's the power line. Yeah. So it's on the very edge of it. So the entrances will be to the one. Okay, one side. All yeah. right. Everything is on that side except for that one little pile of top. So we cross that in one spot. <coughs> Mr. Price. Yes. Will you please take the microphone with you if you walk up to the council so I'm I can sorry. hear you later? Thank you. <laughs> Usually I get uh, fussed at for talking too loud, not <laughs> the other way around. I have a question. What's the pricing on the property, on the houses? Um, somebody corrected me on that at the <laughs> thing. I think it was 300 to three to 400, I think is what was in uh, originally in the paperwork. Where's my lady that had all the information? I think that's correct. That's what I, that's what I remember. That's what you remember? Okay, good. Any further questions? Was a TIA ever performed? Yes, we actually did two of them. Um, we did one for age targeted and we did another one for age restricted, of which there was a pretty big difference in the two. Have, have you seen those, Patrick? We have, we have. and and Todd and I, we, we reviewed those. We felt that the number is a little bit low, but we checked with the consultant and he was using the right references for that. So, and we requested more intersections than the first time. Mm -hmm. So they did provide us with the info and they updated their TIA based on our requirements. Any other discussion? If not, council, there'll be two motions. Mr. I got Cohen? Enough, go ahead. Go ahead. I got a comment. The um, one of the things that council has to remember on this too is it is it is designated residential, which means they can build houses on it, uh, and they can build a half a house on a half acre lot there. So opposed to um, uh, 196, I think homes that are 300 to $350,000, they can build, a, uh, can build a house on there on a half acre lot, and there's really no, there's no, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's no requirements by the town can put any kind of requirements on that. It's pretty much well what they wanna do uh, uh, under those circumstances. That, that's correct. They would just comply with the Unified Development Ordinance, which does not include any architectural restrictions. Uh, and, and, and some of the, uh, and some of the, uh, uh, just in my past experience, and, and we've had a neighborhood like that uh, a couple of years ago, um, and w where they, they could build houses on it, or they could build more houses on it, what was the name of the neighborhood? I'm I'm trying to think of it. It's uh, Heritage, Heritage, Heritage neighborhood, and um, and the developer worked very closely with the residents in the area to, to make sure that they got everything that they wanted, uh, or most everything that they wanted. Um, I know we had a meeting the other night, day with the with the with, you know the HOA. Um, uh, I'm just, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, it's, it's speaking with my f fellow council members, just one-on-one -on -one and kind of thinking and trying to get their idea on this, my, uh, my belief in this would be to, uh, to try to postpone it. And, and, and I know that's not what the developer wants to hear, but I would much rather see it postponed somewhat than it would be to be defeated. And, um, and, and what I would like to see again is um, um, to see more, even more, uh, talking to the residents. I, I, I don't think anybody was really aware last time that they could still build 90 homes there. And I don't even know if the developer would even want to build 90 homes there. Um, that, 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 you know, that, that, that's a flip of a coin. That would be completely up to you guys whether or not you'd want to do it or not. Um, but... Um, it, and that might be a, that's a question for you. What 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 would you do with that that? I'm sorry. Um, 
Well, you know, as I explained at the HOA meeting, this is not a situation where the development is relying on zoning. We already own this piece of property. Um, we've owned it for a while, and it costs money to hold property. So something has got to happen with it. I mean, we're, we're trying to do what we feel council has given us direction. They've, they've given us concerns. We've tried to address them. We've tried to come up with a number of units that we can actually spend way more money to make this a lot nicer neighborhood. Um, if we put 90 lots in there, I mean, just business-wise, the numbers don't work to spend the kind of money we can spend to do this. And as far as the developers go, if, if uh, I'm just, I've been told that something's going to take place. Um, we're just, we're trying to, to, to make something that not only the town can be proud of, but the neighbors also. Um, I'm sure you're aware of those pictures, and, and I sent more than that, came from Bonterra Village. Um, the density here is not, is about half of what's in Bonterra Village. Um, we're fully restricting. We're actually going above and beyond the HOPA requirements. HOPA says you can market 20% of this to under 55s. We are, our intent is to deed restrict each one of these lots so that there won't be any owners under 55. Um, now we have to, according to the HOPA law, I think at least use 20% for hardship cases. If, if, uh, retired couple has a daughter and a child that um, have medical issues or something that that is a hardship case so at that you know 20 percent of the people if they have that type of hardship can uh, move into the neighborhood but that's one reason why I, I said as far as the TIA is that under regular HOPA and age restricted yeah 20 percent of those lots could um, you know be marketed to anyone but the reason I didn't really question the numbers is we are going to age restrict every single lot and um, we just feel like it would be this is the best use of the property for the town um, for the future residents for the neighbors for everything so we hope that you will um, give it favor favorable recommendation this evening thank you Tommy, I got a yes. question. Uh, so, um, if I remember correctly, um, at the last meeting when we talked about in enforcement, the enforcement of that would then end up being at HOA level? It's an HOA or, a, or <coughs> uh, the management company's responsibility, and it's, it's controlled and restricted by the government, by the state of North Carolina, or federal government, actually. The HOPE is a federal um, law. So, once you apply for it and have it, and there again, though, it, this is not a situation where um, if they don't keep good records and nobody knows, they would, it, it's deeded. It's part of the deed to the piece of property. So it's not like, well, if they don't keep good records, it could happen. It's, it's, it's way more of a legal issue than that. I have a couple of comments. Just, Go ahead. Um, you know, I, I drove that. I live in Bonterra. Um, so today I drove um, from Faith Church Road all the way to the roundabout at Poplar. It's 3.1 miles. Uh, using the um, subdivision residential development figures that, that came, that's been updated since 618. Um, you know, in Bonterra, I think right now we're probably a little over 700. I know when I was on the board <clears throat> for our relinquish when I came on was right at 693. So it's probably over 700. Um, but you can, uh, the, it's showing that you can build 1,395 homes there. Uh, Annandale is full at 181. Fieldstone Farms is 501. But then you also have to look at Southgate, uh, and we all know that Southgate, um, there's something coming on board that, you know, the um, part of it has been sold to Atlanta developer, if I re remember correctly. 
but that's listed at 542. Um, uh, Union County just approved the 99 townhomes um, right there on on, uh, <clears throat> on Poplin. And then uh, my understanding is that, that there is another property which would be across from where the Southgate uh, development would go in um, that I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 townhomes that's potentially going in. So when you add that up, and I'm a numbers guy, if you hadn't already figured that out, um, that's a little over 2,900. Um, just figuring two and a half cars, that's almost 7,300 cars in that three and a half mile space. We have a um, elementary school um, there. Uh, I actually, as I think, several people know um, the school year of 2016 2017 I was out there every day uh, monitoring traffic and we would have upwards of 1500 cars just during that time we fortunately now there is a uh, crossing guard um, you know it, it's really a unique situation that Indian Trail in my opinion, is in. Um, we've all seen reports. We've actually, I know Jerry and I have actually talked to developers that say that there's um, relatively no space um, in Charlotte anymore. In fact, um, what I've looked at is, is that they're actually tearing down old facilities to rebuild facilities. So as we know, there's a lot more coming out here. There's a lot of, uh, we just, heard of a, a huge concept here there's several more coming um, you know uh, as Tommy said you know um, they've done everything that that we ask them to do I'm just I'm, I've, I've got real concerns I mean I, I, I'm sitting here trying to figure out which way I want to go but um, if I may yes you said you're a numbers guy I am too I like okay. numbers be careful what we know what we are proposing is Less cars. I have not counted. Less kids. My numbers do not include your. Property. I understand, okay. but like Mr. Brand said, and I and please don't take this wrong. And I, but I'm just trying to make sure everybody knows that we're by right have nine. We can put that in there, and according to the TIAs and just numbers, you know, 2.3 kids per house. Both parents working, more traffic, more kids in schools, and we listen to you, and that's the reason we up from age targeted to age restricted. So I, 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 I just want to make sure yeah. you under, you're aware because I know um, Mayor Pro Tem said he wasn't really quite sure of that until our um, HOA meeting. So, and you know, we do have that study coming back from the Secret Shortcut uh, Plan, and we have seen some proposals that um, uh, along that route that include um, retail so um, again I, I'm not I, I, at this point in time I can't tell you whether I'm going to um, approve it or not I, it's just some of my comments and I'd like to hear what everybody else is so um, my concern from that particular um, project and just the Bontara uh, continued phases is if you take that um, Seacrest shortcut, well, you want to call it the Bontara Access Road. If you take that and you get out to Faith Church, you have a problem if you want to turn right. Um, there's no light there, and all the traffic that came out from Bontara, that entrance that that's now on the road, also have that problem. If you had that development, whether they go to work at nine or whether they're retired, irrespective, they're going to have to turn left at some point to get out onto Secret Shortcut, um, to get onto uh, Idlewild Road, or if they're going to go across, you know, um, or continue on Faith Church through um, Lake Park. That is the concern that I have there from that particular um, intersection. It's not signalized right now. I know. And um, um, but I mean, I'm just, I'm not telling you what to do. No. I'm just saying, I know that it's not signalized. And in, 
to add more traffic in there, whether they go to work at 9 or 10 because they're retired uh, because of the age restriction. That is, my, that is the one big concern I have in regards to that property. And quite that honestly, that's not, you know, that's not my expertise. I'm not a traffic engineer. Um, that's why we paid um, professional traffic engineers to study those intersections and, and base them on what the accepted standards and, and what it needs by how much is being used and how much whatever we're going to add to it does that. And, you know, I just have to trust professionals. Council. How would you like to proceed? Is it, is it I, I, I'm, I'm not really prepared to vote on it tonight. I mean, <clears throat> basically, my position is, is I'd like to see the small area plan um, completed before we interject some of these developments before that is done. I don't want to kill this development necessarily, but I think we should postpone it. For how long? Till the small area plan that. comes back from the county and the town. Yeah, when is that? August. Is that right? Brooks. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the current schedule is to have it uh, completed in, in August of this year. I, I can certainly, you know, I was conferring with Missy, who's a project manager on that study, and I can, I can share with you with the draft recommendations for this area and, and what it envisions. It's not approved, obviously, but it, it, it envisions, you know, a medium density residential product in this uh, or land use type in this area. And I believe in that study they're considering that, and again, just draft, but three units per, a up to th uh, three units per acre, which this would fall under. Uh, so again, unofficial results, but that's what they are, uh, as at least as of today. One comment, one, one other comment. Uh, Tommy, I, um, when we were talking about the Heritage Project earlier, um, I think the council w was pretty much well prepared to vote against that project. Mm -hmm. The developer came uh, and asked me personally w what he could do to, to and I said, listen, make, make the residents happy. And you, you tried. You went out and you, you did a, you, you know, 20 people or so showed up at that um, at the meeting, um, uh, I, I, I don't think the council's prepared to, to, to vote on it, and I still believe it, it, it even, even it, and it really, it doesn't, it doesn't really even matter a lot of times what the council thinks, it's what the residents think, and, and, and what, what residents we did have there, I didn't get a, I didn't get a positive input from what the, tw the 20 residents had to say that night. Now that doesn't mean, but that's very little. And one of the things that I'm disappointed in a little bit, and I live in that area, is, is we, we tend to in that area not to, to participate in um, uh, what's happening around us. Uh, I remember when we did the, um, uh, many years ago, when, when we had the, um, the other one on Poplin Road, what's Southgate. Uh, Southgate, big community. We'd have one person from, from um, uh, anywhere in that area make a comment on it. And, um, and that was, you're talking about, that's, that's a pretty big, and of course that's been years and years ago. And um, I think it's very important that, that, that we do our job too in and, and carrying this out to the residents and I see a few residents sitting in, in, the, in the room tonight and, uh, and getting their input. And because I know there's doubts in my neighbors. I know, that, that I know they, they got doubts. And, and if I were to ask the neighbors that I think here tonight, that, that, that even though they didn't speak, I don't think they're for the project. So th th that's, and, and I could be dead wrong. I could, I could be dead wrong. Um, but we need to take this too back again back into the neighborhood again and 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 if, if you're so willing well, and I, yeah we'll do whatever you say but i would just like to say to that too that like i told you at our last meeting i've sat where y'all sitting for several terms and i know it's hard and i know if you're not quite sure about something we want to hear the people well there's i mean thousands of people in any trail and we've had three 
public meetings that we've invited the public. And at some point, they have elected you guys to represent them and make and vote for them. And you know, I just want you to know that. But I and I don't I don't mean to sound like I'm getting frustrated, but um, I really, you know, you wanted to wait till after you get the area plan study and Mr. Burhans told you what pretty much it's going to say, which is higher density than what we're proposing. Um, we've listened to you on the schools and the traffic. We have, we have the number of units that we can really do a nice clubhouse, nice pool, nice amenities. We've, we've had two different traffic studies done. Um, I just don't know what else I can do. I mean, I can go knock on doors, door to door, but you know, I don't know what the good that's so, going to do. So from here, we, we don't take the, the comments that you have, we're not taking them as you're frustrated or anything. Good. Um, you're not wrong in that you've had free meetings. I, I know you have. Um, you've come before us twice, and you've asked for feedback, and we've given that to you. Mm -hmm. One of them I would have liked to have seen was the feedback, I think, from Council Member Hall, where she talked about um, instead of the seven-foot you know, landscape for the noise barrier, maybe something a little more um, solid to prevent the noise from the highway. That's one, but that's a suggestion or, well, or something that she could ask, and you can take it under advisement. One of the other things was the construction of the buildings or the houses from the front. I know you're using the Bonterra model, which is basically trying to be comparable to what they have there. Um, and then the traffic study you mentioned that you've done twice, once for age-restricted and one for age limited, I think, it's the, the two terms that you've used, or age targeted. Um, so we, we, we don't want to have you keep stringing you along. We don't want to do that. That's not our intent. Um, and I know that voters did have us up here to make decisions for them, even if only 20 show up to a meeting. But the thing is, the concerns that we're voicing is legitimate concerns. For one, a couple of us actually live over on that side of town. Mm -hmm. So we do have an idea as to what the traffic entails there in the morning. Um, Council Member um, Morse mentioned that uh, he and I did drive. We drove over to that side of town and also to this side. We kind of just wanted to, instead of just um, sitting here and voting, we felt if we would get out and, although it was a Saturday morning, but we felt if we could get out and drive around, we could actually kind of get an idea where we see some of the bottlenecks coming up. And that was one of them that we recognized. Whether or not you build your property, your 90 or 189, Still going to have a problem there for traffic in the morning at some point because of Bonterra's construction. But these are just things that we just wanted to bring to your attention. As to how the other council members vote, that's totally up to them. I understand. Yeah. And if I can just answer what you said. We, I was prepared to tell you if you want a wall, we'll build a wall. But I was told that that really wasn't as much of a concern anymore. So we felt like it's just as soundproof and way more aesthetically pleasing to do a high berm and plenty of planning. We've actually got a 50 foot wider planning buffer there to, to load up on that. So we did address that. As far as the, the style of the houses, we don't really know who's gonna be building in there yet. We know this type of architecture we're gonna do, but that's purely a business decision now. There, there's only a certain point to where you can still sell the house in there. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna sell a six hundred fifty thousand dollar house in there. So, you know, we were told it was because of fire concerns and codes, and, and we're willing and prepared to go with every state and local fire code. Um, at some point, that becomes there again a situation of of just business. Um, so we have tried to address you know, the concerns wholeheartedly, I have, and I, and I appreciate council working with us, staff has worked with us. Um, so, you know, you guys tell me what you wanna do. <clears throat> and I hate to, to, to drag this out, but isn't, isn't there a, um, what's the date, 12? Isn't there a, another HOA meeting on the 18th? Um, 
I, I don't know. I, don't I think know. it's the. I don't really want to send him to another meeting. Well, that that would be a Bonterra HOA meeting. What what I would like to see is is, uh, and I've talked about this several times. Is I'd like to have a town hall meeting on our side of town, not only for for uh, Mr. Pope's, um, and we talked briefly about this at your meeting the other day too. Is about what all that's happening on that side of town, and there's a lot happening over there, and that can be part of it. And um, you know. Uh, you do a good job, okay? You do a good job, and you come in here because I would I would have thought when you first came in that that it, this was a, a really really tough sale, and it, it is a tough sale. But and I'll tell you why because this council wants to do the right thing, and it wants to do the right thing. And if it if it doesn't know what it wants to do today, it's because it doesn't know what it it still wants to do the right thing. It wants to do what the residents wants it to do, Tommy. And and I respect you. But every time you come in here, you sell me a little bit more. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, you do. And 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 I want um, I want what's best for the residents, pure and simple. I understand. And yeah. and I want what's best for what they want. Really I understand. Not what I want them to want. I want them what they what they want, and, and I'm gonna listen to them to what they have to say. I understand. So, I just so know there's. If, a... I think if if if, if you, you know, I'm gonna just quickly now shut my mouth here. I promise. You know, you, you got 90 homes that you could build that that you're that, that but you're gonna build 196. You're gonna build a 350 thousand dollar approximately house, which I think actually helps. Is is probably slightly more than what houses are selling for in Bonterre. Mm -hmm. So it's only going to hurt. It's only going to help the 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 uh, the you know what the houses cost in the neighborhood already. Um, you, you you have positives. You, you have positive. You're going to have less cars because of of the 55 restriction. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a piece of land that eventually something's going to be done with. I mean, whether you build 90 houses on it or 190 houses on it, you're going to do something with it. So, um, you know, all of us want to do the right thing. We want to do the right thing, but we want to listen to these residents before we do anything else. And that's why I want to take that meeting. We don't have to kidnap them. Residents don't want to do it, but but you can sell it. I mean, you you sell it. I think there's a lot of good things. That actually will help the community, uh, opposed to hurt the community. But uh, we believe so too. And uh, quite honestly, I just—and this is my personal opinion—I've, I've attended a lot of these, invite the neighbors and do this, and and I don't care if it was in my own HOA or whatever. You can you can schedule forty of these things, and you're only going to get the same 20. people every time. How many I don't do you have for the heritage rocks. How many do we have? 20, uh, 20 meetings. 20 meetings. And how big a neighborhood is that? Total 385. 385 homes. And and and, 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 and listen, I understand I understand your frustration. <laughs> I do understand your frustration. But did it do we think that had anything to do with passing, getting that neighborhood? Yeah, I think it had a lot to do. I'm not saying have 20 meetings, not at all. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying listen to what the residents have to say. And the more you listen to what the residents have to say and what they want, and, you know, w w whether it be something, s some things that they want to do that, that makes everybody happy, that something that you can do that makes everybody happy, who knows? You know, maybe uh, I think 80% of the people were, were were in favor of it before it was all done. I think a very high um, concentration of people were just tickled to death at, at the end of it because they had a say into the neighborhood. They they decided how that neighborhood was going to be built. But you know, that's just just my my opinion of it. So. Um, I think we probably talked about it long enough. Anyway. Yeah. What would you like to do, Council? Vote or table and request another meeting or wait for the study? I don't want to wait for the study because Rock said what the study is. Okay. <clears throat> well, well, talk. well, there's a place on there to, that, that we can, um, we don't have to approve it. We don't have to disapprove it. We can. I don't want to disapprove it. What, what we could do, excuse me, is, is um, just move to table the public hearing or um, extend the public hearing until a date certain meeting in the future um, if we wanted to do based on and I'm just suggesting this but um, first weekend uh, first meeting in September um, after we will have received no, the small area plan 
or something along those lines. That's an, that's an option, but we would just continue the public hearing until a date certain in the future. Okay. May I make a comment? Okay. Uh, Tommy, I think yes. uh, the station area, area plan, we have 1,100 acres out there. I don't think we considered that uh, in our traffic impact study. Uh, we only selected certain uh, uh, intersections. And I don't want to keep picking on traffic, but I do concur with council in regard to what would be the impact of that 1,100 acres. I mean, we're going, the product that we're going to get from the study is land use based on input. And that probably will give you an idea, not only just for an idea about what's going to happen there, but also competition, because we're beginning uh, to, to receive calls and inquiries from developers from out of town in regard to that 1,100 acres. So I just want to add, I'm, I'm, I'm not advocating uh, making it <coughs> earlier, or that's the council's decision, but I think there is a benefit of getting input from the station area, area plan and see its impact on any, any uh, uh, pending development or de ongoing development that's occurring right now. I understand, sir, and <clears throat> I would just say to that is when those neighborhoods come online, if we were to do another traffic study based on that thousand acres being developed, right. we'd be doing all the road improvements for the other developers coming in after them. So then they just come in and they don't have to do anything. So, you know, we're coming in, we're taking care of, based on our TIA, what ours is causing. The next one comes in, he adds ours to his plus the others, and then he does what's needed for what he's bringing. Yeah. And, and you, you know all that. But I just, you know, I, I see a few residents here tonight, and, and you, help me, help me get the word out to, uh, to the rest of the neighborhoods in the area uh, to, 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 to have some conversation about this. And, uh, and, and let's, 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 uh, but not one person spoke tonight. It, it, and, and really, w what that does generally to me is, is, uh, as, as counsel, is if, you, you know, you don't have any, uh, n anything negative about it, uh, it's too late to say something negative about it after it's been approved. If, you, if, we've got, if we've got problems with it, let's bring them up and let's see what, he, what the developer can do or what somebody can do. Because if we don't get any kind of uh, any kind of uh, feedback from the from the community, 26. then then it, it, you know I, I say you know you um, know it, 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 then th we probably should do it. You know so, that, that's that's my, my, my so if I can make a suggestion, um, Tom, it is. Yes. Um, I appreciate you wanting to work with us because we know you can go in and put ninety, right? But you want to work with the town and get that done. Right. So here's the thing. We're not gonna. I don't want to string you along and have you wait in perpetuity. But um, how about um, we we request for more information, and we vote on this on the 26th of June. We tell you exactly what we're gonna do um, in regards to that. That's my suggestion. But by information, you mean? So one of the things I'd like to. One of the things that I personally would like to do is to actually look at the traffic impact study. Right, that's what I personally like to do. I don't know if council would like to do something else or have other questions. Um, that would give us a little time to, in the event that, um, I think there's another meeting, David, you mentioned that's, that's coming up. So no, that's. Th th there's not, in, 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 in our respect, I think that's a great idea. I'd like to see it postponed to maybe the second meeting, if there's not even a second meeting in July, though, is there? There's just no. one. There's one. just one. Yes. Uh, I like and, that. And, I know you like that one better, but 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 this gives the this gives us a, a chance to have a meeting. Uh, I, I think that the town should should have a meeting in, in a, 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 a town hall type meeting uh, to discuss all the all of what's going on around that area, and this would be the main topic, but also a chance to explain other things that are happening around there that are big changes for that, for that side of town. And I, I'd, and I, I would personally like to see it move to another, you know, two weeks is not really enough time, I don't think. I well, think I, we and I, I can't speak for the, right. the owner. So, okay. you know, I, 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 quite I, honestly, I, I, if I, I go back and say, look, they want two weeks. Let's hold on for two weeks. If I go back and tell them you want two months, I don't, I don't know. I don't well, know. So I can't make any promises. He's saying um, the... 
What's the date of our meeting in July? Uh, there's one on the 10th and one on the 24th. The, the 10th, you saying? 10th of July? First, first meeting in July? Because I think we, we have we, one we in August. Do, we can do that, that one or the one in August, the first one in August. And, mm -hmm. and there is one. There's one for the 24th, right? They still, we, do, we do have. There, there, is, there is two in August, uh, July, because we usually don't do two in July. Right. Okay. Here's, here's the other thing is we had our first public involvement meeting the first of February. So we've already been from February to middle of June listening, changing, meeting. Now, I don't know how much more we go. Just well, I tell you what, Tommy, I, you know, I, I, I think it's the best. I really do. I think it's the best for you. We could vote on it tonight and we could say no and, and we could just be done with it. I mean, if the, but, but I think this is the best. And I don't mean that. To, um, to oh, I understand. A, a like way. I say, I'm, I got. I'm trying. To, I got no problem trying to talk them into two weeks. But if I try to talk them into two months, Councilman, I, I don't. I don't know what. Can we? Uh, you know, maybe we talk to the individual HOA president. Could I, could I offer maybe a split, a split the baby kind of uh, sure. compromise here is that you know, what I'm, I'm hearing obviously ideally from the developer's perspective getting this a, a final decision reached in a couple weeks would, would be ideal but I, I think if, if the idea to schedule to have more time is to get more public feedback that's going to be a challenge in, in two weeks this is not going to happen so perhaps maybe we could shoot towards that first meeting in July which I heard was the t around the 10th and that would give an opportunity uh, for the developer to reach out one more time, and, and staff could certainly help with that like to uh, the neighbor, you know, the neighborhoods in that area. Really, the no. same three or four that we reached out to uh, and, back and, in and, May. Can we have like a town hall style, style meeting? I mean, that's up to the town, but but to, to bring more people in and let them. Nobody else shows up. Then we decide. We've already discussed that. Nobody else shows up. Then. Mm -hmm. You know, what can we do? We, we, you know, we're doing everything we can to get public input, okay? That's what I want to do. I want to get public input is, is uh, all we can do. I, I understand your frustration. No, I, I, that's fine. I, I, I understand you guys want to do what's right. Um, like, I just don't know how many opportunities you do. Well, I think the last opportunity is July 10th. If, if, if somebody doesn't come forward by then, I mean, that's it. But... I think it, in terms of our due diligence, that would give us that opportunity. Council, if I may, just uh, some more information for you to consider. After we scheduled the last meeting in May, I believe the town promoted that meeting on its website, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, so we did a good bit of promotion ourselves for that meeting. I got uh, one comment from a resident. She was a realtor, and she was excited about the idea of uh, some more development in that area. That's the only... Uh, engagement we received when we were promoting an additional meeting for this uh, conversation. I wonder if we can, if we can commandeer Chase's um, electronic messaging board and park it out there in that area and see if that would drum up some more interest. Uh, you know, we can get uh, Mr. Chase's email address and we can I, I say let's let's do about let's quit you know we're we're prolonging this thing to say July the Council. July the tenth and we can try to have a meeting somewhere between that that time and nobody shows up then nobody shows up and that that pretty much well says that there's not a lot of interest in it and the in in that side of uh, the the neighborhood you know uh, you know Mike's comments everybody's comments I'm I'm just trying to do the right thing that's all. Okay. Mr. Chair, if, I, if, I, if, this, if it's the will of the council, I just want to make sure the um, intent is clear: is that the whole is that we're going to defer or continue the public hearing until the July 10th uh, meeting? Uh, the idea is to have really replicate what we did in May, or with what the uh, developer did in May, in reaching out to the neighborhoods on uh, the northern eastern side of, of 74. The developer will will facilitate, you know, will, will arrange the lo the logistics of and where the meeting will be located. Staff will help with notification. In, in the same manner as we did before. And if we could, we will put the electronic message sign out there for, for the public meeting. We, we've done that before. Great. Okay. Council, so we're postponing the public hearing to the July 10th meeting. Well, we we'll need a motion. Postpone the vote. Postpone the vote. Yeah. 
Is that all you need? We'll continue the public hearing until July 10th, and then we'll and then any public who wants to show up and comment at that time would be allowed to, and then we would close the public hearing and vote after that. Okay. So, request more information. Done. Thank you. So we we need a motion, right? Yes, we need a motion. Yeah. Uh, I want to make vote. a motion to request more information and postpone this motion vote to July 10th to right. our July 10th meeting. We, we, to, if you could say to continue the public hearing. To continue the public hearing until July 10th. Until July 10th. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to continue the public hearing to July 10th. All in favor? Okay. That would be unanimous. That brings us to zoning map amendment, continuing public hearings, number one, ZM2015-0073, 600 Radiator Road, parcel 0708, 7007, 117.55 acres, ordinance number 287. Rox, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. So we're going to discuss uh, rezoning at the Radiator Specialty Corporation site, uh, case number ZM 2015-0073. Just wanted to add one area of distinction between this case and the case you just heard, which was a conditional zoning case. This is a zoning map amendment, so it's just a rezoning from one district to another. There are no concept plans. There are no conditions. It's just a, a rezoning from one district to another, subject to compliance with the UDO. So the proposal before you is to rezone a 117-acre parcel. The existing district is regional business. The proposed district is light industrial. The applicant is Aaron Martin with the Radiator Specialty Company. The underlying intent is uh, ultimately the property has been used by Radiator Specialty since really the 1960s, and it's been used in a light industrial capacity. Uh, they wish to rezone it from its current commercial classification to an industrial to more match up with the use of the property, but also the design of the facilities. The, as many of you are aware, uh, Radiator Specialty will be vacating the site, and their goal is to either sell or lease the property. So just to familiarize everyone with the location, on the left-hand side is an aerial of the property. Uh, as you can see from Old Monroe, uh, Radiator Road travels to the facility in the back, which uh, is against the railroad. They also own a second piece of property on the other side of the railroad adjacent to the Harris Teeter distribution facility, which would also be a part of this rezoning. And then, uh, again, the zoning map uh, to your right shows the area as zoned uh, in blue, which is uh, regional business. Hey, just a, a, a photo, I believe this is a, their administrative office. Okay, from a comprehensive plan standpoint, uh, the property is recognized as uh, being intended for future industrial, and that is on both sides of 70, or on both sides of the railroad. Okay, a community meeting was held for this project on April 26. Five people attended and just asked, you know, comments and questions about why is why is the company relocating, uh, how is the property currently being used, and what would be permitted if the amendment did not pass. In May, uh, the planning board uh, heard this item. They found it consistent with the comprehensive plan with land use and housing and economic development goals and ultimately found it to be a uh, reasonable request. And I believe that was a unanimous recommendation. Okay, great. So I will go ahead and read into the, the record of the findings that they uh, developed. <clears throat> the, class, uh, the rezoning is a reasonable request and is in the public interest because it promotes uh, business expansion and growth within an area of town that is uh, compatible with surrounding uses. <clears throat> the, uh, they further found that the uh, proposed amendment is consistent with the comprehensive plan and is ultimately a uh, reasonable request. Okay, so I'm going to ask that you receive this information. Oops, sorry. Receive this information and any public comments and ultimately uh, reach a decision using the process that we've outlined in this slide <coughs> with two votes. Any, any questions? questions for rocks? There was no one that signed up for public comments. So at this time, I will close the public comments portion of this hearing. Mm -hmm. If there's no further discussion, there's two motions. I'll make a motion <coughs> to uh, make required consistency findings as read into the uh, record by staff to approve. Mr. Heads made the motion to make the required consistency findings as read into record by staff. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion pass. We need a second motion, please. Make a motion to approve as. That's why. Make a motion to approve as presented. Mr. McIntyre has made a motion to approve as presented. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Thank you. That brings us to zoning map amendment ZM2018-0012, 
Charlotte Kennels, parcel 0706601 3C, 1.5 acres, ordinance number 288. Rox, you still have the floor, sir. Absolutely. So we're, we're going to be discussing a Charlotte Kennels request, ZM 2018-0012. Zoning, again, a zoning map amendment, no conditions. Okay, this proposal is to rezone approximately 1.5 acres. Uh, this, the subject property is located in a, um, uh, on a property between the existing Charlotte Kennels, biz Charlotte Kennels business and the Traywick neighborhood. The proposal is to rezone it from uh, single family residential four to the regional business district. The applicant is the owner of Charlotte Kennels, uh, Ms. Nicole Moore Johnson. Uh, while the, the intent is not binding, the, uh, the owner has indicated a desire to expand the Charlotte Kennels facility to build an accessory building that will um, house uh, office space, some uh, laundry facilities, and storage. If approved, uh, the, the, the application would still need to get a special use permit approval from the Board of Adjustment after the rezoning, and the applicant is aware of that. Okay, just for familiarity on the subject property, the rezoning site is uh, identified in gold with the red boundary. You have a circle around it. As you can see, it's kind of an isolated landlocked parcel uh, located directly behind the Charlotte Kennels facility, which is the blue parcels in, uh, also outlined in red. So it's just a, a desire to expand that blue boundary into the uh, gold square there. And again, it's hard to take it because of the isolated nature. It's hard to give you a representation of what the property looks like. So the, the, the picture that you see in the bottom right is from the rear of the Food Lion parking lot. You can see the roof of Charlotte Kennels. The rezoning area would be off to the left. Okay. Now, in terms of future land use, because of this, this isolated property's look, uh, proximity to Treywick, it is actually identified for future residential, so there is a slight conflict with the, the comprehensive plan. Um, however, later, as I'll discuss later, the plan board was still able we still believe that there is some consistency with some individual goals of the comprehensive plan. So, community meeting. What, what's, what's a community meeting without you know, dogs and cats? You know, around the conference table. So, the meeting was held in February of this year. Uh, seven people attended, mostly, uh, in, I believe, entirely all Traywick residents. Just had common sense questions about you know tr any truck deliveries taking place. Concerned about the loss of the trees. And uh, there's some existing <coughs> ponding issues in Traywick, and they wanted just information on how this would affect it, pro or con. Okay, the planning board heard this at the May 15th meeting. And again, they were able to identify that the uh, land use and housing and economic development goals were consistent. But again, with the map, with the actual future land use map, there is some inconsistency. So what that means is, if the council were to approve this rezoning, it automatically uh, updates the comprehensive plan to reflect the commercial, the, you know, commercial use. So let me go ahead and read the uh, planning board's findings uh, into the record. <clears throat> the, re, uh, the proposed rezoning supports, the existing, supports existing, an existing business which would benefit the immediate area as well as neighboring communities and it is consistent with land uses along Highway 74. The proposed amendment further helps create a more balanced tax base and promotes a diverse local economy by supporting business growth and expansion. It's a reasonable request and is in the public interest because it promotes business expansion and growth within an area of town that is compatible with surrounding uses. Again, I'll uh, certainly uh, ask that you receive this information in any, in any public comments and then uh, ultimately ask you to make a decision using the criteria we've outlined. Any questions for Rox? No, uh, no one signed up for public comments. I'll close the public comments portion of this. The owner is here. If she'd like to say a few words. Um, I'm here for questions if you have. Do you have any questions for the owner? No. No. Nope. If there's no further discussion, we'll need two motions. Mr. Morris? Uh, I'll make a motion to um, make the required consistency findings as read into the record by staff. Mr. Morris has made the motion. To make the required consistency findings is read into record by staff. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion pass. We need a second motion, please. <coughs> motion to approve as presented. Mr. McIntyre has made a motion to approve as presented. All in favor? That would be unanimous. Motion pass. Awesome. Brings us to old business. Item A, Beacon Hill Stormwater Improvement Project Update. Mr. Sadek, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, uh, we just wanted to share with you uh, information about the project, additional information, because I, I briefly talked about it uh, about an hour ago. On the upper side, you could see there is about at least 300 feet of a channel, and on the lower side, there is about 400 feet of a channel. Uh, uh, 
what we did, uh, Adam did uh, something unique this time. He utilized the same contractor that's doing the storm <coughs> drainage work for us. Uh, so that will lessen the mobilization uh, cost. Uh, we have options in here either to uh, uh, blend it uh, uh, with the cost of the, uh, as part of the stormwater budget, or uh, we could take it out of the capital ordinance uh, that council uh, approved for uh, uh, this project. Uh, right now, uh, the improvements that we did, the, uh, that we done there, um, sort of like a lesson learned, is uh, the, and you could see, uh, I think that's a good work for, for an existing channel. Uh, we do, if, if for any reason we feel that we still have issues, we have the options by the Corps of Engineers to come in and dig some of the bottom of the channel and haul it out. We, we could do that. They will not uh, uh, have any issues with that. But uh, if you look at the bottom of the pipe, it doesn't matter if we remove too much out of, uh, uh, too much silt and, and soil out of the bottom of the channel because you'll be ponding water and that will bring uh, snakes, mosquito issues, and sometimes odor. So I think right now for what we've done out there, we've done the ideal ultimate repair. So all what we're going to have to do is just uh, sit and watch, and we do have a representative on site. Mrs. Howe is out there watching it all the time, so uh, we thank her for doing that. But uh, we do have the capacity to dis transmit uh, the flow and discharge it on the other side of the, the culvert. But that is an example of a probably large number of culverts that we have here in, uh, in the town that we might be tackling the same problem at different locations. So. We just wanted to share that with you, and uh, and we thank you for allowing us to move forward with that project. Any any comment from from council or Mrs. Howe in regard to that project? I, I'm very pleased with it. It held up one side did for a storm we had about a week ago, two weeks ago. It was pretty bad. It held up, and it was fine. And it hasn't rained since. And I was in Florida for a couple of days, so I don't know if it rained when I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, I'm happy. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? So with the other neighbors, <coughs> too. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Council. Any other questions? No. Mr. Sadek, is any other comments? No, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to new business. Item A, Economic Development Grant. Mr. Sadek, I'm going to yield this Mayor. one to you. Well, I'll open, I'll open it up to you since you... You want... I don't need... Okay. Um, in a conversation I had with Representative Dean Arp, um, we were informed, I was informed that uh, this year in the North Carolina state budget that he was able to include a $50,000 economic development grant for the town of Indian Trail, which is included in the 1819 budget, and we will be receiving from the state of North Carolina. Uh, much of the congratulation goes to the hard work of this council and the cooperation and expertise of our staff working with the state and much thanks to Representative Arp for noticing and fighting for our town. Um, I believe that's it. Any other comments? Uh, no, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Weep, weep. I'm sorry. Go ahead, oh. council member. I, I just want to thank the mayor. mayor had a big part in this. Mayor, mayor thank you for your hard work in doing this and, and trying to push it off on council for for doing it, you you actually did a lot of the work yourself, or most of the work, and I'm sure uh, thanks goes to Representative Art uh, for for doing. Art, Mr. Art we're, for, we're lucky for, to have Mr. Arp as our we're representative. We're very lucky to have him, but but thank you very much for your hard work. Um, I've done nothing. Uh, uh, I but did. Thank you. I did uh, follow Arp. follow up with uh, with uh, Mr. Arp's office and. Uh, they sent me an email that uh, the, the funds will be probably in our hand in about a couple of months. So, and I also uh, did ask his office if, if he could share that with us by visiting council and, and when the money comes in to come before council and, and we get a chance and council gets a chance to thank him for his efforts. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, sir. That brings us to Mr. Evans. Did you have anything to add to what you said before? Or was that your presentation during the budget? Okay. Yeah. Um, is it, did you want to come back up or? 
Did I? Any other further questions for Mr. Evans? You did a great job, Gary. Thank you. He pretty much did his presentation during the budget hearing. Okay, thank you, Gary. We'll move over that to committee meeting liaison. Liaison update. update. Mm -hmm. Council, did you want to go one by one down, or was there any specifics for tonight? Um, <clears throat> there wasn't really any specifics. It's just that when we have some of these meetings, we kind of want to report back okay. kind of what went on. Um, the last meeting I think that I attended was when Councilman Cohen um, and Ms. Howe decided that they would give us a chance to go over t and see the ABC board meeting, kind of how that, that all works. And um, unfortunately, when we went there, the, um, I think the finance director had suffered a stroke. But from what I heard, she does give some pretty impressive numbers when, when she does her presentation. But um, I think um, from that meeting, there wasn't anything that was uh, earth shattering in terms of new news. Um, uh, we, they kind of went into the discussion of how, um, you know, they keep abreast of some of the stores. They talked about the performance of the Indian Trail store as compared to other stores within the county and the state at, at, as a whole. And um, from what we're seeing, the, the town, the, the staff at the store doing a good job. The, the, the manager was there talking about the revenues that were coming in and so forth. Um, so from that, there wasn't anything new that came out of that. Um, and that, that's really all I have to report from that particular meeting. Um, <coughs> Councilman Head, I know you were, you and I both attended, so I don't know if you have anything extra no, that you'd like to add to that. You verbalized it correctly. Thank you. Any other committee updates? Yeah. Uh, this is on the stormwater. We're going to become, uh, the actual people that are on the committee are going to become more active. And we're going to visit some of these uh, sites where they are having problems. And they think, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, it was like 30 cases you have to do. Uh, I was, yeah, and I was asking about getting a list where people could see what we were doing and what the cost was. I think it, it's, uh, it opens it to uh, appreciate why they're paying the stormwater money. And that was about it. Are you looking at me? No. We're looking no. at you. Anybody okay. else? <laughs> I, let, I wasn't at the uh, parks meeting, oh, well, let me uh, and I wasn't at the ABC morning because Marcus wanted to go. But, but um, <laughs> Jason, I, I've been to other meetings, and you do a wonderful job for the parks. So, and I don't know if Katie was there. I don't. I really don't know. I was sick, as, as you might have known. But anyway, do you, do we? You have an update or I Jerry? An update. Jerry, sure. Yes. Okay. Well, that, we're going to kind of go out of sequence here, but. Um, you don't mind, I'll, I'll talk about carpool first. Is that all right? Well, I, you can talk about anything okay. you want to, um, <laughs> Well, the last, uh, last few meetings, um, whether they're committee meetings here or over in other um, municipalities, have been counseled or had um, something come up that, you know, that, that we couldn't attend. But um, the last carpo meeting that I attended was on May 16th, and really it was, um, it, it was, pretty much just approving bylaws and some changes, um, legalese. But the biggest thing that came out of that was the, the NCDOT prioritization 5.0 process, and that's for the, the TIP, the Strategic Transportation Improvement Plan. Um, and the big thing that comes out of that is right now there's a 30-day public comment period that you can actually go on the Indian Trail website, and there's a link directly to it, to CARPO, and this is about projects that are um, that are coming online, that um, looking at the point assignments. And there's there's this weighted point assignment that CARPO does, but basically you need 30% uh, quantitative score um, for you to have a regional impact. So, anyways, um, um, there is that public comment period. It takes place. May 21st to June 20th, so I'm encouraging all Indian Trail residents to go to crtpo.org, and um, you can do an online survey, and they basically want you to, to look at the different projects, thank you, um, that, are, that are being proposed, 
and you know the squeaky wheel does get the grease so that if you know if we if we as a community can speak up then perhaps we'll get a few things faster than, than not so that was um, the May 16th meeting um, there's also in September there's going to be another comment period and that's for division needs so you have regional needs and division needs um, again you just go to the carpo.org and and check it out June 5th um, I believe that was last Wednesday uh, we had the Union County MPO and that was held down at Wesley Chapel and we were discussing the Monroe Bypass uh, Warren Cooksey um, Robert Cook and uh, Bjorn uh, put that on and um, Warren Cooksey is with the North Carolina Turnpike Authority but basically the update on the Monroe Bypass is going to be opening to traffic November 27th presently that's the slated date um, the costs are, are confirmed now it's two dollars and 54 cents for a two axle vehicle to travel the full length I forget what that breaks down to per mile uh, three axles three dollars and forty cents and some change and four axle is like four dollars sixty three cents it's basically a 35 percent increase per axle um, that's one way <laughs> you got to come back 74 <laughs> on the return trip if you're out of money um, the, the nice thing about it there's going to be some ribbon cuttings that are going to be taking place with Indian Trail and Stallings and everyone that's impacted by the bypass and so there'll be more news coming um, about that but uh, the, we're looking like the week before there'll, there'll be a ribbon cuttings and possibly some um, an opportunity for residents to get out there on that road say to walk it or to bicycle it um, before it opens to the general public they did something like this before at I-485 in the north end they actually let um, have some street races but they're I think they might be rethinking that with the Union County drivers um, um, soon you'll know when the bypass is really fixing to open up the the um, North Carolina quick pass account store will be opening and right now for whatever reason it's super secret but it's it's not being disclosed except it'll be down in Monroe um, to access any of these toll roads around here you'll need a uh, your transponder and so we'll be able to purchase those for seven dollars it's a one-time fee or you can get a sticker that you put in your car and it's free uh, you can also create an online account and you can preload it with money and then when you do take the bypass and um, you're billed automatically there's a 35 percent reduction so something to consider if you use the, the, the any of the toll roads uh, heavily um, also at the June 5th meeting we discussed the I-485 widening and that's from 77 to 7 uh, I-77 to Highway 74 construction is going to begin in 2019 and the planned completion is 2022 they're going to add one managed lane uh, from I-77 to 74 which managed lane is a toll lane um, and it's predominantly what they're wanting to have is carpooling you know, whether it's um, let's see let me find the the proper word van pooling carpooling buses or other high occupancy vehicles they're going to also add a general purpose lane and but that's going to end at 16 so that'll be added from Ray Road to 16 that's 485 not 77 right 485 yeah from well from I-77 there's a managed lane all the way to 74 and that's on 485 uh, but there's only going to be one general purpose lane added and that's Ray Road to 16 16 to 74 there's it's just going to be the toll lane they're also going to have um, some intersection improvements and one of those is going to be the I-485 US 16 you know Providence Road one mm -hmm. there's a new one a Weddington Road interchange that I didn't know nothing about but evidently it's been anticipated by our Weddington municipality so we'll so then um, also the 74 is going to be widened and that's from I-277 to conference and the construction and there's three phases to this but construction in phase one begins this year and it should be completed next year 
They're going to add a managed lane, and they're also going to have a reversible lane from I-277 to Albemarle. So for folks like you that go into town um, that direction, that will be pretty cool. And let's see. June 5th, we had Indian Trail. Well, we didn't have an Indian Trail Transportation Advisory Committee meeting, but thankfully Todd sent out um, a notice and, and, and let us know that there was no meeting in May or June. However, the 2018 patching contract bid process is complete and has been awarded uh, for about 78,000, and the resurfacing contract has gone out for bid. And so um, then June 6th, in Shirley's and David's absence, I attended the Parks and Rec Committee meeting. We received a, an update on the Family Fun Day. It was a success from all outward appearances. And there were some lessons learned. Um, some of the successes, you know, it was well attended. Everyone had a great time. Fireworks show was a big hit. Big hit. Lessons learned were the need more shuttle buses, uh, need more parking. It's very popular. And some safety precautions were recommended for the newly opened splash pad. They also discussed the upcoming Fourth of July parade, as well as next year's 2019. And there was uh, a person made them aware that. Um, you know, they were going to have that construction out there at Sardis. We took a tour of the splash pad, and there won't be a meeting in July. If you all were looking forward to that, it'll be August. And that's my update. Anyone else? A hey, quick question. Yo. Um, what's the difference in a uh, transponder and a sticker, if the transponder is $7 and the sticker is for free, or do they both do the same thing? Uh, the sticker is you pay by mail. But does it cost more it's to a use toll. the sticker? Um, the transponder, okay, the transponder, the hard case, you could use that with the Sun Pass, that's, I guess, Florida. I and, think Easy and Pass the as well. Peach Pass? Easy Pass as well. Easy Pass, yes. That's what that one is good for. It's in there. So if you travel to those states, you use that transponder and it works on their toll roads, whereas the sticker doesn't necessarily do that. But even if you don't have a sticker and you travel, they'll bill you by mail. They do. Yeah. yeah. They, and there's a cost more. Yeah, yes. exactly. Thirty-five percent upcharge. Mike Head, I think. Mr. Head, you had an update. Um, well, I, like Marcus said, mm -hmm. um, I did go to the ABC board uh, meeting. Um, Ultimately, we'll be transitioning to that. Um, transitioned off of CRTPO, and uh, Marcus is, is taking my spot there. Um, you've heard a couple of, of times that um, working with the other municipalities, and we actually have a meeting tomorrow evening. Um, this, this will be, um, I think it's our third. Um, and we've been having it during the day, um, and, I, and uh, Ms. Howell and I have been attending, and then uh, uh, tomorrow night it will be um, uh, Jerry and I. And what we are, are doing, and, and actually we've got uh, just about the whole uh, Stallings uh, Council coming. We've got two or three members of the Weddington um, I think there, there are a, a couple more coming. And what we've been doing is, is really um, seeing how it's kind of different from, from the quad. We're, we're kind of starting over, um, seeing how we can collaborate. And so the, the agenda tomorrow is really um, pretty simple. Um, one of the things that, that came up, one of the, the uh, topics is uh, sharing of equipment. Um, we think there may be some value there that, you know, together, you, you know, we may not, not one municipality can afford it, but if we go in together and, and come up with some sort of rental program that, that maybe we can buy some equipment that we can share that will reduce costs throughout the system. Um, and then we're going to uh, spend more time on what smart growth looks like um, for each of the municip municipalities and start sharing hopefully start sharing TIAs so that um, uh, we know what they're doing. Um, their TIAs can flow into ours, just gives us more information. And then traffic, you know, traffic is always a, a big issue. So it's, it's, again, a way of, of keeping up with what everybody else is doing from a traffic standpoint when their roads are coming on board. So 
Um, we'll have that meeting tomorrow, and um, it's in its infancy stage, but um, I, th I think it's going to uh, going to bring some uh, fruits to our labor. Hey everyone, okay, I'll give one quick update. I believe the next meeting, one of the meetings in July, um, we will be getting an update from Union County Public Schools as to the construction of Sun Valley High School and how they're redoing it. Uh, I'm working with Gary Sides, who's our Board of Education rep, who's gonna be coming in and doing the presentation. Uh, what I've seen of the plan, it's an excellent plan, and as soon as Gary's schedule allows, he'll be here, I'll let the council know. Construction began today. That's it, that moves us on to Item F, resolution calling for a public for a public hearing, two bond extensions. Resolution number two, Mr. Siddick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, we're asking council to adopt the resolution. Simply, uh, uh, Jim identified the expiration date for two uh, bonds that we currently have. Uh, one of them is for Old Monroe Road. Uh, it's uh, we do have five hundred thousand dollars on hand, but. Uh, the bond exp uh, extension uh, is for nine million five hundred, and the second one is uh, two million five hundred uh, thousand. That's out of a seven thousand uh, seven million dollar street bond. So uh, uh, Jim worked with with Raleigh, and they uh, they approved the extension. And uh, we just need to make sure that the money is spent uh, prior to twenty twenty one. So we will continue communicating with DOT just to make sure that we will not have to go for another extension. Uh, anything to add, Jim, that I missed? Okay, so we're just asking council to adopt the resolution uh, for, ex for extending those two bonds. Any questions? No. We need a motion. The, just, just to be specific, this, this motion for this resolution is actually calling for the public hearings. There is a process that the town has to, to undertake to get this extension approved by the citizens and by the council. And so just to be clear that it, the extension doesn't happen until after this entire process is complete. So tonight's motion would be to adopt the re a resolution calling for two public hearings on July 10th, 218, to extend the 7 million general obligation street bonds of the town of Indian Trail, North Carolina, and two, to extend the $10 million general obligation thoroughfare bonds of the town of Indian Trail, North Carolina. And if someone just wants to say so moved, that would be perfect. So moved. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McIntyre made the motion. All in favor? That would be unanimous. That brings us to discussion item, annexation master plan. No, no? I think resolution. Oh, sorry, the highlighted one. Yep. Resolution authorizing sale of certain real property. Um, I'll take that one. Okay. Um, the town received an offer on um, property that it owns adjacent to a future development, and the um, we've been working, Rox and Patrick have been working with the developer. Um, we did receive an offer in the amount of $93,750, which is the appraised value for the 1.5 acres that they wish to purchase. Um, the, what we're asking council to do tonight is to pass a resolution authorizing the sale of the property at that price and opening up the upset bid process, which we are required to conduct pursuant to state law b before we can sell the property. Where is that property? That is just a reminder, I did uh, come before council one time, it's for Sagecroft mm. uh, development. This is across <laughs> from Radiator on Monroe Road. Uh, close to, uh, adjacent to our property, the main property that we had for the Faith Church Road project. So just a reminder, that that's the same property that Karen is mentioning. And the property is going to be used for a stormwater pond and to bury a sewer pipe. Yeah. Do you need two separate motions? No. no. Just one motion to adopt the resolution okay. authorizing the sale of certain real property. Okay. We need to make a resolution, make it, to adopt the resolution. Correct. And I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. Authorizing the sale of the okay. property. Ms. Yeah. Well, made the Karen motion. Said, all in favor? What all Karen yes. just said, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Raise your hand. 
What'd you say? Mr. Cohen's made the motion. All in favor? Yes. <laughs> that would be unanimous. Okay. Now that moves us to, dis to uh, discussion item annexation master plan rocks. Welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be back. Okay, so uh, I'm going to briefly talk about an item that uh, I think originally uh, originated from a uh, council discussion, I think at the budget retreat, if I'm not mistaken, about uh, t you know, s stepping up on uh, annexing these unincorporated islands that kind of surround our community, really surround really every community uh, in North Carolina, and seeing if we can be more, instead of reactive, being more proactive. I think that was the, ultimately the message that we heard in light of kind of the, the challenges we have with our conservative annexation law. And so this is a, a program that uh, KDC and, and Michael Parks have been kind of working on, trying to put some framework, a framework to, and we want to share this with you uh, and get some feedback. So ultimately the goal is to get more properties to annex into the town of Indian Trail. These are properties that are really right on our, our borders, and so the, ser the extra service cost to provide services to them is not incrementally that much greater versus something that's you know, far off. And so the program really, uh, the proactive nature of it is to reach out to unincorpor unincorporated property owners and really sell them on the benefits of being in the town of Indian Trail, a very simple, uh, very simple proposal. And a component of that would be looking at the infrastructure within the community, because a lot of these communities have roads that are maintained by DOT or privately maintained by their HOA, or some that maybe they're just not maintained at all. And they're, it's oftentimes our experience has been they're interested in the town possibly taking over maintenance of their infrastructure. So we would want to investigate that a little bit too, to make, so the council can make an informed decision if it were to choose to accept an annexation petition. So staff has done some preliminary uh, GIS analysis, and uh, Ryan Lip, our planner, who's in the back, uh, was in the back, sorry. <laughs> That's good. Uh, did uh, a great job in identifying, well, how many properties would be in this annexation you know, master plan program? And we came up with roughly 500 individual properties and roughly eight neighborhoods. And that's a lot, but we also have to recognize not all uh, properties will be good candidates for annexation. One, there are some subdivisions that are uh, what I call kind of rural subdivisions and just wouldn't match, uh, match up well with Indian Trail in terms of our rules and regulations and whatnot and just be, a, it just wouldn't be a good fit. And some vacant properties, many vacant properties, it may just not make sense for them to annex into Indian Trail because really there aren't a lot of benefits for a vacant property to annex into Indian Trail. So we want to just kind of share that perspective as well. So this is again just an early analysis of the of those properties. Uh, the yellow are the subdivisions that uh, could potentially be eligible for annexation. Uh, green are the individual properties, and uh, blue just represents the current municipal limits. And again, we can uh, I know it's a little hard to see on your screens, but we just want to give you a brief snapshot of where those properties lie within the town of Indian Trails boundaries. So again, I think from a procedural summary, we want to kind of um, Really, we, we saw this being done kind of like on an invitational basis and come up with a, and this is you know, really where uh, Katie and, and, and Mike Parks really kind of you know, worked closely together, is come up with like an invitation to property owners that we could mail out. It doesn't have, to, not a, a government fact sheet of what the taxes are and what, you know, what their liabilities would be or a punch list of items, but really just a simple invitation uh, centered around some key benefits that might attract someone's attention. We think those, those benefits might be, uh, you know, the free garbage and recycling that we offer as part of, you know, property taxes, uh, access to parks and rec amenities, which there are, there are numerous and there are priority, um, uh, priority, priority is given to residents over unincorporated residents, and then accessibility to local officials. Because right now, if you are an unincorpor unincorporated resident in this area and you have uh, an issue you want to take up with uh, your local government, you got to travel down to Monroe, and who's to say the, the person you speak with is familiar with the Indian Trail area or the issues that you may be going through. We think local representation might be a key selling point uh, to unincorporated residents who may not feel they have a, a great voice. So reaching out to individual properties, but and also on the neighborhood level, reaching out to their HOAs to see if uh, there might be an, an interest. Uh, we think there's an opportunity to update our website and other resources so uh, property owners can make an informed decision and we can be very transparent about the process. Uh, if we do generate annexation requests, we want to try to do them in a, in a batch level because we would be paying for those. Uh, it's been always been the town's kind of philosophy on, an, on um, property owner initiated applications. So to, to be efficient with our resources, would, we would um, try to do those in batches. 
And you know, we don't see this as being a three-month program, a six-month program, a year program. We think, we think this is going to be a continuous program. And it will evolve and change as we learn more and get more feedback. So I just you know, kind of prepare you for that. This is, this is more of like a permanent program because it'll be, there will always be unincorporated properties out there that you know, could be eligible. And so uh, we want to evolve as we learn more through that process. So having said that, that's kind of a broad overview of that program. Again, all the credit goes to uh, KDC and, and Mike Parks. Uh, they really put a lot of time and attention to this and try to kind of ferret out all the, the details. Uh, but this is our response to the council uh, uh, initiative that was discussed at the budget retreat. So, Rox, I have a question. Sure. Um, there's a guy at work who is unincorporated, and I keep telling him that they're going to put a 1,000 apartments right next to his house, just tell him he should come over to the town because, you know, that way he can get the benefits of living in the town. Sure. The garbage, swan, and I said the parks. And his answer to me was, I use the parks anyway. Sure. You know, meaning that he has an initial address, so he just goes there. And I mean, we can't check everybody going to the parks, right? I mean, that, that doesn't really make much sense. But I like where this is, because we have a lot of people who do live within the limits of the town that are unincorporated, that they are not part of the town, meaning they don't get the representation or the garbage or any of these things from us. So I'm happy that we can probably, hopefully, try and reach out to them, show them the benefits of mm -hmm. you know, being part of the town. Yeah, I think as it specifically relates, relates to the parks, I mean, you're absolutely correct. I mean, you, any, anyone, someone from South Carolina can come in and walk the trails or get up, go on the playground or whatnot. I think where you may have an edge a little bit is if they're families. Uh, with you know, families with, ch with ch uh, children where the, uh, there is discounts provided for program activities. Also for the, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, for the use of this facility, any of our community room type facilities, there are lower rates for residents versus yeah. non-residents. And so um, that might be more the, the edge um, <coughs> that, that we could, at least you know, a position we could present to them. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, two questions. Uh, to be annexed, you have to have be voluntarily annexed, correct? Generally I mean, speaking, yes, sir. You can't go in and just annex somebody. What is the percentage of, of let's, let's, there's 100 people live in the neighborhood. What would be the percentage of people in that neighborhood that would have to vote to be annexed? 100. 100. So ultimately, you'd have to get a. So if uh, you were to include a, an area, so 100 people, 100 homes in the neighborhood, yeah, and, you, yeah. and we got a petition um, that was less than 100, we would, uh, and Karen, I'll, I'll, I'll lean over to you, but I believe what happens is it ha they ha the, the folks that did not sign the petition and, and asked to be annexed, they would have an opportunity to vote. It, ultimately, they would get a decision to vote on the annexation. The state changed the rules several years ago. It's very difficult to annex people involuntarily. There is some contiguous um, the rules about you know if if you're next to if you're right next to the town so it's easier to do maybe one at a time possibly in some circumstances, yeah. um, but if you've got three neighbors and then a gap and then three more neighbors it, it, it makes it very challenging. It's uh, it's completely up to the individual. So it, 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 let's say neighborhoods are going to be about impossible to annex because I, w I wouldn't think if you had a hundred people in the neighborhood you'd have a hundred people vote uh, all sure. hundred of them to say yeah you're going to have somebody yeah. say no absolutely and. and I guess the, the other thing, eighteen and a half cents, correct? Is, right. is, Tax is, rate is basically what they're what is what the difference is. Um, yes. Yeah, so so it, w the way the balancing act is is yes. So they'd have a, a they'd now be paying town taxes uh, in addition would be, to the difference would be the eighteen and a half cents. And so, you would counterbalance that against what? Yeah, they're they're likely using a private hauler for their garbage, which I think is we guess estimated from seventy five a quarter, so about three hundred dollars a year. And um, so taxes on a two hundred thousand dollar house are around two hundred. Jim, help me out here. Okay, yeah. So it comes out. It comes out pretty close. Just, and just for your garbage. Just for just by virtue of using garbage. So there is an advantage to, well, to coming into the town. There is, as well as our service is better than going out and hiring an individual uh, hauler because oftentimes they may not be getting recycling. They may not be getting the yard waste. They may not be getting the the bulk uh, uh, pickup, and so and in the other secondary programs, you can tell I worked on the RFP. And, but so, uh, so just in my mind of thinking, you, 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 the smaller the group of people, or the let, let's say a, a person owns a, a 50 acres of land, okay. you're going to have probably better luck trying to get that guy with the one person that owns 50 acres to get that 50 acres in yard to have a neighborhood of 100 people. Oh, oh ab absolutely, mm -hmm. and and so again with the uh, for 
developed properties, you know, I think we have a story to, to, to tell. I think for vacant properties, you know, really there's, there's not uh, there's not an economic advantage. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, we also have to take into account stormwater fees too. That's an element as well. But I don't believe unincorporated residents pay stormwater fees. They don't. And and, and uh, one last quote. They have an advantage. Yeah, they they do. And they don't pay. Right. One. Well, I remember over the years that occasionally we go into Brandon Oaks and 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 um, annex a house or three houses or mm -hmm. or however that sure. works. J just for clarification, you can't you cannot. Um, you can't go to a neighborhood and annex 97 houses or 94 houses and six houses are not annexed. I, actually, I, I, believe if, I believe you can. Is if, if the neighborhood is contiguous to our city limits, we can draw an annexation boundary taking into account the 96 out of 100 lots. Where we cannot do that is if it's a, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to use the right term, the, where it's a non-contiguous non uh, satellite annexation. The, state, the statutes say that you, you have to annex the, all the neighborhood or nothing. So we could do that. So if, uh, say 90, one last stupid question. <laughs> say 56 people wanted to do it. <laughs> sure. Would, would, we be, would it be advantageous for us to annex 56 houses and 44 of them not? I mean, would I, we do? Would we do that? Would would I mean? I don't know. The yeah. I would imagine it would depend on the state, the state of the roads, the how easy the you know the, the garbage collection would be. So sort of where the units are located. And I, and I think as part, I guess we have to look at each case individually. So we have to look at you know again, um, is it advantageous for both the owner as well as the town to, to, to enter into this partnership? I think we do probably need to drill down in terms of what our road maintenance responsibilities are because there are a lot of roads in Indian Trail for neighborhoods that are in the, our municipal limits that we don't provide road maintenance for. And so is that, you know, in, in, you know are we obligated for that or is it still optional? And so, um, but I believe uh, we would need to look at them on a case by case basis. Uh, but I could def I could absolutely see a scenario where we annex in, let's, I'll just say half a neighborhood, um, if, we, if there, particularly if there's a clear and logical boundary that we could, you know, could establish with that. Because uh, look, I, I, you know, the, the, as Karen mentioned, annexation laws have gotten tighter and tighter over the last, you know, five or 10 years. You know, I know there's a desire for, uh, just rumors that, that there's a desire to make it easy for, uh, you know, for a little, annexing little small pockets and filling in gaps. But that legislation hasn't passed, and, or, and I haven't seen any proposals in, in a while. So I think if we have a good opportunity, the town should really give a good uh, should give consideration to it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when <coughs> Christmar was being built, or they were planning on building there, they annexed the Beacon Hills, mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't voluntarily. They, right. they just took us in and. That was a different. That was a different era. Yeah. So oh, yeah. The, yeah, so the, the annexation. Laws have changed then. Yeah. The annexation laws were dramatically different in the early 2000s, early, early, all the way up to I don't know, 2010 or so. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you could you could uh, annex uh, proactively uh, against the neighbor neighborhood's wishes, and it fell down to like a formula in terms of kind of how quote urbanized the area was and whether it was contiguous or not. And you prepared these detailed reports and whatnot, but those days are, are gone. And so it's annexation has been put into the control of the property owner now. And, um, and, and that, that, that's just, that, that's the, the, the way the statutes are, are, are written today. Uh, one comment I did uh, share with Rox a couple uh, items that we, we need to keep in mind. Uh, like if we're dealing with communities and neighborhoods, we need to make sure that the roadway system is maintained. We shouldn't be taking it from the states unless, unless they give us maintenance money or they maintain the roadways. In addition to that too, also that comes with storm drainage issues too. So this is what we're facing at Beacon Hill and many other communities where they flood like First Avenue. The, the streets, they're not owned by anybody. So we just, when we, when we deal with big communities, we need to make sure that the roadway system is main, it's not costing us a penny. And then on, on top of that, associated storm drainage issues that we have with it. Just to share with you, uh, Union County recently uh, talked to Adam about they're trying to right now not to uh, no longer maintain any street signs within the town of Indian Trail. And we've elevated that, and I'm all elevated to Miss Cotto. So that's another item too uh, right now that we would be responsible for that Un Union County was responsible for that will end up 
picking the tab on that. So it's not final yet, but these items we need to kind of uh, pay attention to. And if it's uh, some gated community or big communities that sometimes we go in there and do a survey and see how much it'll cost us to maintain all their items. And maybe we'll ask them to bring it to compliance before we go in there and take it over because that could, if, it, if a big one, big problem, two, three million dollar storm drainage uh, project could bu bust our budget. So uh, we just need to carry this conversation further um, and see how we could implement that with this annexation plan. Sure. But uh, we've talked about that. I just wanted to mention it to council. Some of the challenges that we might be facing. So this is the program that we put forth to you. It's again in response to some council feedback we received, and so you know we're certainly open to suggestions. There is some, uh, I believe, some funding in the, in the budget that you recently adopted, so we could actually have uh, some resources to move forward with this. And you know, again, so we're open to feedback. Council, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Comments? Everything's okay. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like. <clears throat> If you can identify the low-hanging fruit out there and go after it, it's a good program. Um, and it benefits Indian Trail and the resident, so I'm in favor of this for sure. Let's proceed. Thank you. Do you need a vote or a consensus? I think, I think we don't need, yeah. Just providing information. Just There's no feedback. need for I think, any I think actual what counsel. I'm, here, I'm, I'm seeing some uniform head nodding, so in the right, okay. in the affirmative. In the, in the affirmative, yeah, not, <laughs> okay. not the other kind. Right. Um, right. Thank you. Thank you, Rox. You're welcome. Okay, that brings us to the item for the Grand Marshal selection. There were four candidates before you. I believe three of them were recommended by the Lions Club. And one of them I had at the invitation of our town manager, I recommended one and sent an email along with the reason being for Mr. Denny. Uh, council, now, I guess now's your time for a discussion and to ask information on the candidates or vote for one. Anyone? Sure. Um, you know, living here a while, I, I know Jeff, uh, I know about Mr. Denny, and I know Charles. I don't know anything about Mr. N Nikolai. 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 Yeah. Does anyone have any information about? I that know gentleman? who he, I know who he is. Yeah. Um, but just based on what I know, I I, I would recommend Mr. Stein. He's mm -hmm. he um, he you know he brought Indian Trail Pharmacy here, right there, and he's been a pillar in our community for quite a while. And uh, I think he'd be a good choice. Nothing against the other persons at all. These are, can we have four? Oh. Anyone else? So I, I recommend Charles Stein. Any other recommendations? Any other comments? Do you have any, Mayor? You, you recommended somebody. I recommended uh, Chuck Denny for his lifelong work for veterans and picking up the. Um, torch where his father left off when his father passed away and fighting for veterans with PTSD and chasing down any federal elected official through the years from President John Kennedy to current Vice President Mike Pence where I witnessed myself Mr. Denny hand him an envelope while being grabbed by Secret Service agents um, to bring attention for the veterans and recently the United States Postal Service approved the PTSD stamp and it's going into production at the beginning of the year. And all proceeds from the sale of these stamps will be immediately turned over to the Veterans Administration to treat any and all veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome and bringing attention to mental health with those that have served in our nation's military. Uh, it's been a battle that his father fought for 40 plus years and he didn't slow down the battle for the last five years plus, and he's been a pillar to our community. And I thought considering the Veterans Memorial being approved at this time, it would be appropriate to recommend Mr. Denny at this time. Not discounting Mr. Stein, but ultimately the, dis the decision belongs to the council. They're all good choices. Will somebody nominate somebody? 
He did. Is there more sure nominations up there if you want to make a motion? <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 you know, no disrespect to Garland or Chuck. Um, I don't know how many more opportunities we will have with Mr. Stein. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to recommend that um, Mr. Stein I make a nom uh, make a motion to nominate Mr. Stein Grand Marshal. Mr. Morse has made the motion to recommend Mr. Stein. All in favor? Jerry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. That would be unanimous, Mr. Stein. <laughs> will be the Grand Marshal for the 4th of July parade. Um, can we only have one Grand Marshal? Or that's entirely have? up to the council. You could have co-Grand Marshals. You can have, I think it's been done before where there were two, but no more than two. But correct me if I'm wrong. I, my memory slips me. That's up to. Would council be opposed to two or one, one or just oh, one and then next no. year? You I always think have it's Christmas. the way from it when you add more people to it. I agree. I think we just... Yeah, it's, it's always, you know, it's always Christmas. Okay, good. <clears throat> it's yeah. one. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Thank Two, you. <laughs> I'm only kid. <laughs> All right. Um, that brings us to the manager's update. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Only two items. I, I think we, uh, we uh, did provide... Uh, a very detailed report, uh, unless council have uh, any uh, questions. But the first item, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that uh, Katie and Jason, they got two scholarships and simp uh, for $1,000 apiece, and each scholarship would allow them to travel uh, anywhere during uh, the, the, their conference that they belong to, and that will take care of hotel, money, gas, everything. That saves me some money out of my budget. <laughs> But uh, well done. I think both of them hit it at the same time, so we're, we're very proud of them. The second item, I think uh, Council Member uh, Cohen asked me if we could put the three-minute uh, video for uh, the event at Crooked Creek, so we're just going to show it to you. Well, that's nice, because I, I asked for that at the first thing of the meeting, and I thought <laughs> you'd forgotten about it, and I thought, <laughs> No, okay. it, should have, it should have been on the presentation, but... Uh,
and uh, video production by Mike Parks. Very good. We'll get the train for the parade. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That brings us to council comments. <coughs> Mr. Morse. Another good meeting. Um, getting a lot accomplished. Uh, Family Fun Day, I did get to participate in that. And staff, you all were great. <laughs> uh, we all survived the monsoon. Some of the equipment out there did not. Um, but you all were professionals. You really, nothing but uh, great comments from, from all the visitors. There was even um, an incident with the lost child, so I got to see those radios in, in action, and um, that, was, that was very good. And then um, I guess, you know, after the, the family fun day and the fireworks, um, I got to meet this gentleman that was on the paper. Maybe I shouldn't use the word gentleman. I happened to go into Food Lion that night, or Saturday night, and that wasn't the night that they got robbed, but... Um, I walked, I dropped my grandson off and, and uh, decided to stop there and get something to, a snack since he ate my pizza. And while I was in there coming out, those two cats came in. And um, the, the hair on my neck stood up. There's something about it. And so I sat out there in the parking lot for a little while. And then um, I went on, went about my business. Well, Monday on Facebook, it, it's amazing, but Facebook, um, there was um, a post by the Indian Trail Sheriff Bureau of you know, Sheriff's Department here, the Indian Trail Bureau. So I ended up calling the 911 and said, hey, I saw that guy. But I was a little bit confused because it was Sunday night they got robbed, right at the same amount of time, at the same time. Um, and um, so I, I, I called in, Detective Moore took my information, and um, I hope you get those guys. But more importantly, you know, y'all be very aware of your surroundings. Um, a lot of the crime has spilled over. And if, you, if you're, that little voice inside of you says something to you, listen to him. Because for whatever reason, I go in that food line and I never think twice about passing people, but just that one instance. Um, so I'm... I sat out there in the parking lot that Saturday night and, and I, I identified three cars. And then uh, I ended up um, leaving. But um, anyways, y'all be careful. And Gary, from what I'm hearing, um, sounds like I, I, I might have made a bad choice on, on one of my votes, but um, and I'm hoping that <laughs> that you proved me so wrong. And um, because I, sometimes I like to eat my words and, and, it, and it's okay to be wrong when it's for the better of, of everybody else. So, but thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Ms. Howell. Well, I'm looking over at Katie and I, every time I see her, I just break, break out in a big laugh. She's, uh, she's something else. <laughs> And you know we love you, but you've got more energy than anybody I've ever seen in my life. And you make the party. You really do. Oh. <laughs> but we were so pleased. And I, and I, told, I told the staff that uh, we, 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 first of all, when the rains came, Jerry had a, a, a cam, a, a, the phone or the camera, whatever he had. And he says, you know, six more minutes, it's going to be here. And then four more minutes. And, so he scared the daylights out of us because it was all red and we thought we're in for it. And we really were, but we moved the table and everything back uh, under our coverage there. Thank God we weren't in a tent, but I know Gary, you had problem with your, your tent there. But uh, it was scary. I've never been outside with weather, lightning striking and, and the wind blowing. It almost felt like we were being lifted. We probably were and it just didn't form into a... Uh, tornado but we appreciate the care that we were given Jason you guys went out of your way he made sure we had some pizza and something to drink and uh, you know just made us feel very important and and I guess I like that that was nice 
And um, anyway, David, you really missed the fireworks. It, they were just great, too. And, you know, that's going to be a destination for the rest of the years here now coming. Every year you have it, you have it out there. And 100 vendors, I mean, that's amazing. And one lady was selling lemonade, and uh, I think it was Mark as one of the Somebody, one of the officers was there, and uh, he said, she didn't do too bad. She sold 500 lemonades at $5 each. Wow. And uh, so she, she <coughs> reaped the benefits of that. But it was great. I just couldn't believe there were that many people in the park, and I wish there was a way we could have done a real count. <laughs> and uh, and it, my time's up probably anyway. <laughs> Okay, that's it, and, and thank you guys work together so great, and the phones that the man back there borrowed, you know, that real, I saw you all use those, and, uh, and uh, I won't say anything, Chase, I promise, <laughs> and uh, that was nice, too. So, David, you missed it, but you're going to be here next year, so that's, that's good, but thank you all for coming tonight, and uh, it was a long meeting, but uh, we all love each other no matter what, so that, that's a good sign, too. Thanks. Mr. McIntyre. Oh, sorry. Um, thank you. Um, very good event for the Family Fun Day. Um, a lot of people, in spite of the rain, uh, people still came out after the rain subsided, including me, myself. Um, Chase, good job to your guys out there, um, directing traffic, helping pedestrians cross the street from the Sardis Baptist Church even making a decision to have everybody go right at the end of the event. I think that was very, really good. Um, Jason, you and your staff, you all did a really good job. Um, as David said, um, really good destination. I didn't get a chance to vote on the fireworks because at that point in time, I was not on the council. A few minutes later, I did get on, but I think it was a really good thing. Um, the fireworks, I felt the guy really put on a good show. Um, they were well timed. They went up really high, and thank God for the rain because if there was anything, they, they, they really did go up really high. I, I honestly, um, but it was really nice to see. I think people, a lot of people enjoyed it. I, I, a couple of people, you know, that I spoke to after that I knew who were there, they enjoyed it themselves. But seeing all the vendors there, town staff, they're working hard. Shirley, you, Jerry, uh, Mike, uh, doing your work for the Veterans Memorial Fund. Uh, the memorial outside, that's pretty good. Um, but Patrick, to you and the staff, good job. Um, Jim, you, you and the staff, good job on the budget. And thank you, everybody, for coming. I appreciate you. Mr. Cohn. Yes. Um, I apologize for not coming to the, the you knew I wasn't going to be there. If it makes you feel any better, I was sick that day. <laughs> and um, I was at my sister's birthday party and <laughs> I couldn't attend very long. I was sick. So. But I, I wanted to say a couple of things today, uh, oddly enough. And that, uh, back, I don't, I don't know, six, seven years ago when we, when we had the vote on the parks, you don't realize how big a deal that was. And I look, in th I look through this room and I, I see people that were for and I saw people that were against. And, um, you know, I, I, I stood out at early voting for – for many many days and and uh, and and talked to many people and and um, and it was very much for the parks and one of the biggest complaints that we got back in the day from for the negatives of it and and I understood the negatives it was we'll never be able to afford the maintenance to keep up the maintenance of the parks not, not only do we have to build these parks there's all this maintenance and there's all this all this negative stuff that that came out with it but I asked two people this week that I knew voted against the parks, if you had to do it all over again, what would you do? And they said they'd vote for the parks. And um, it, uh, it, made me, it, it made me feel good because, it, um, you, you know, you're not right a lot, but I think I was really right on, on, on that one. And, it, and this is not here to talk about me. This is here to talk about you. Um, ha and when, when I, I'm talking to you, too, I'm, I'm talking to all of you in the parks, that... Um, you have run the parks, and you've done such a great job with, 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 with what we've got, and you've made it such a success that you've made me look good, so thank you. Uh, and I appreciate that a lot. Uh, and and, and I'm, I'm saying that jokingly because 
I bet if we had to do it all over again, instead of being, I think the vote was 57, 58% to 42, 43%, uh, I think it would be 70 to 30 or, or more because of the fun that the people are actually having in these parks and doing the things that you guys have created. And it, we're, we're just darn lucky, I really believe that, darn lucky to have all of you, and, and, I, and I appreciate you very much. And uh, Jim and your staff for the budget, fantastic job. Uh, as Shirley said, you make it easy enough for us to understand that you've done one heck of a job. And, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 your whole staff, I know, had to work. And in, in you, you also, uh, town manager, Jim, you did a great job also. And, uh, you know, all of you, Todd, and I don't want to leave you out, and Mike, and, and Rox, you know, you know, I love you. <laughs> And Adam. Uh, um, and Adam, of course, Adam knows. But anyway, and Gary, appreciate all of you. And uh, one last thing, Jerry, Shirley, and Mike, <coughs> thank you for working that thing out there, man. Y'all did one heck of a job, and I know it was hot, and uh, you, you actually get out there and en enjoyed what you did and made people smile. And uh, um, may I tell you what, we got one heck of a council here, t here too. Uh, and uh, I'm proud of each and every one of you. And uh, if I've got a year and a half left, then I feel real good uh, with with leaving it with, you, with with the guys that we have up here. You're doing fantastic. I appreciate, and I appreciate all of you. And thank all of you for coming. Mayor Alvarez. I think the council pretty much said it all. I did all their comments. Thank you, staff, for a great job on the budget. Gary, great job. Uh, Patrick, thanks for keeping it all together and moving forward. Council, keep doing what you're doing. Everybody have a great night. And Mr. Head. Well, again, um, you got me before we go. Uh, I am going to take a, probably a couple extra minutes because I think what we showed up here tonight was we take our job seriously. I mean, and it was, you, you saw a lot of a lot of consternation of, of how we wanted to vote. And, and it's, you know, we talk among ourselves. Um, and, and David said it right. What we're trying to do is get it right for the residences. Residents, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> so it was, uh, while it may have looked very uh, 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 weird uh, that we were up here trying to figure out what to do, uh, but we care, and we want to make sure we make the right decision. And we made the right decision this time. Um, I want to thank, um, and I wish the staff was able, and look, it's 9-10. Um, having the, a big group of staff here w was unbelievable, and, and we really do appreciate each and every one of them. Um, budget. I, <clears throat> I leaned on, on Jim and, and Patrick and many others to, to get through this, and, and I think we've got a great budget going forward. Mr. Evans, you've done, I think everybody has already said it, you've done more than, um, you've done, what, in two weeks, more than we've seen. I've been coming to the, the meetings now a little over two years. I've seen in two weeks you've done more than than's ever been done, so thank you. And looking forward to it. Um, <clears throat> family fun day. Um, I got there as it started and uh, my, my family uh, and grandkids came um, and we left after the fireworks. Um, I didn't hear one discouraging word at all. And that's a tribute to, uh, to the staff. <clears throat> it was from start to finish excellent run uh, it was run just absolutely excellent even with the storm it was flawless and, and it's it's hard to say with the storm it was flawless and and I was really surprised at the number of people that came back for the fire <coughs> it was I, I mean after the the weather cleared and the sun came out they were coming back in droves. And, and it really meant something to me, and it should mean, mean something to everybody else, is that they wouldn't have come back if they weren't having a good time. So a, clearly a great reflection. Fireworks. Um, 
you know, uh, yes, it costs money, but my wife was saying, look, this is something you can see on TV. Um, it, it was phenomenal. Um, uh, Jay tried to move us uh, a couple times. He says, you're in the wrong, wrong position because we actually slept, sat in some bleachers um, kind of behind the pavilion. And he says, no, they, they may not go up that high. Oh, they did. We didn't miss uh, a thing. Um, and, and my kids were absolutely pleased. Chase, your guys did a phenomenal job because we, when we got in our car, it, it, it was smooth. I mean, yes, there was a little bit of backup getting on to uh, Sardis, but it was just like clockwork. It, it kept moving. So from start to finish, it was 100% um, perfect, and thank you. Thanks for everybody coming. Uh, everybody go home safely. Thanks. That brings us to a closed session. NCGS 1433-1811 to protect attorney-client privilege yes. and to establish or instruct staff or agent concerning negotiation of price. I need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, counsel, I need a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Mr. Cohn's made a motion. All in favor? That's unanimous. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Mr. McIntyre's made a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. That too would be unanimous. Everybody have a good, a good and blessed night.